on YouTube now. That's cool. Yeah, I know. Her voice is a little, little robotic, but um, well, good to see. I, I have a few familiar faces here, and then there's some faces I don't know. I haven't seen Georgia, um, Sean, or um, I can't remember Joani if I have put a face. Marie, I don't know that I have a face for that. Um, we'll have a couple more people joining here shortly. But today, um, I was feeling a little bit inspired, and so I kind of put together just a tiny little, um, like, recap of, like, what a kin's domain is, because I kind of, I feel like what's, what's easy to do, especially if you don't read the books very often, is it's like, you know, you get an idea, and then, like, uh, slowly it morphs in your consciousness, you know what I mean? Like, slowly you're like, oh, it's actually this, well, what about this? And, you know, you get, like, little doubts, you get little things, so... Um, I pulled some quotes from the book and then just kind of put them in a PowerPoint. So I thought it'd be cool to just run through those again. Cause I, I think when you get like a real clear image in your mind of like what this domain would look like or what a conscious settlement would look like, um, it totally changes the game. It's no longer like some etheric thing that you can't really touch. So got that going on, but, um, it's a snowy day here in the Midwest. I don't know if anyone's been watching the news or anything, but we have like a strip of snow coming through here. I mean, like 12 inches, which I haven't had that much snow since I've been a kid. So I'm like stoked. And the news is like freaking out. I don't watch the news. My, my grandparents watch the news and I was like, oh, okay. They're, they're, everyone's like, people are freaking out and da, 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 da. And I'm like, this is snow, man. Come on. This is we're, we're going to go sledding and have a snowball fight and build an igloo. You know, come on. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's going to snow like three inches here in Texas and uh, tomorrow morning, I guess. But they already canceled school for my little sister. Like for the next two days, it hasn't even snowed yet. It's, I feel like, isn't it like that in California, Amber? Like people freak out with any weather. Like I noticed that when I, I had family there and like when I would drive there, like even rain, people like, you know, driving or like everyone's like freaked out. That's pretty much California completely anyway, <laughs> about <laughs> any situation. <laughs> they're tender folks here. They're not made of the, the hardy. And I apologize to anybody who's in California, but uh, I'm from Texas too. So I get oh. to talk shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I am. Um, yeah, and then another thing that I've noticed too is is people freaking out for you because of the news. Like I had recent, we had we had a, a regular rainstorm, big deal, right? But I guess it made this really fantastic picture somebody took near the river, and like the Guardian wrote up this big article, like oh, the, you know, is Santa Cruz is underwater, blah blah blah. And then I had like my aunts and uncles reaching out to me, are you guys okay? And I'm like. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> like, oh, we had a big story. Oh my god! Yeah, it's like it's this this sensationalism is um, out of control. That's what I think. Yeah, I was, I was. Well, it's funny. It's like you watch how it works in the modern world, in the technocratic world, and if it's not one thing, it's the other, right? So it's like there's you know there's never like a moment of like you know actually there's nothing to report today. You know, totally. let's, it's a great day. Uh, you know, it's like yeah, yeah. breaking news. Yeah, I know. And it's intense. Yeah. They keep going, you oh, know. Yeah. Oh, it's Russia, Ukraine, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's Afghanistan. Oh, it's the weather. Oh, it's the virus. Oh, it's the like, I God. <laughs> Insanity. Silly, it is so and people just eat it up. Like it's like the most, you know, important thing ever. Oh, anyway. Really? Well, that's why yeah. we're all here because we're not eating it up. It so. is why we're all here. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. That's why I'm here because I need a little bit of just goodness. Yeah, well, that's what we're here to do. I, I, It's like so inspiring lately, this community. Like, oh, I get like shivers and tingles when I really think about like the magnitude of like us just gathering here and creating space for like however long we're all here. You know, it's like that is what is so powerful is that is what is Russia that Russia has had for so long. That's what people in these conscious communities start with, right? They start mm -hmm. with community. They start with 
Um, just a little example, I was talking to, um, I'm on the, the board of Missouri Farmers Markets, um, and we had a board meeting today, and we're all talking, and, you know, it's like kind of like one one guy was kind of like, he wasn't dissing this one market, but he was just kind of being like, oh, yeah, they did this, and they did this, and, um, you know, I, I like let him finish, but I, I wanted to say, like, for the group, like, you know, what's really important here is that we're all just connecting, like, that's it. It's not about, like, me or you or, like, in our case, like, you know, who's spiritually this or whatever. It's like, it's literally just this because like we all grow. Um, I think someone posted in the telegram group. I forgot who it was. This amazing quote about like how um, conscious communities accelerate the growth of the individual, like so fast. It's just like, it just happens because they're, Mm. everyone's like on that frequency already and they're receptive, you know, like like Amber, you could say something and I'm not going to be like on the defensive or anything. Like I'm ready. Like I'm, you know, we're here, we're present. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think too, what makes this a a special place is that there's no right and wrong, you know, like there's no, like, I need to convince you that I'm right or, you know, try to get you on my side or, you know, it's like this. um, Yeah. I, I think, yeah, it's just poisonous. Totally. I mean, he, there's even a quote in the book books that literally say like each man, um, each per, you know, human being should decide truth for himself. You know, like it's not like there's no dogma that we need to translate to like everybody, like decide for yourself, feel for yourself what is mm-hmm. true, what works for you. And like right. we all we all have different personalities and are going to live on different land and do all kinds of different things. So, I mean, it'd be really We'd be really ignorant and half asleep if we were just like, well, this is how it is. I got to believe it, you know? No. It's... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then going out and convince everybody else to believe the same thing, too. Yeah. Well, right. we, we do that more as a mechanism to uh, kind of quiet our own self doubt, you know? Let me convince you because I don't know if I'm fully convinced myself. And if you're convinced, I think yeah. I'll still believe myself a little bit better, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, well, I don't want to wait too much longer. Yeah, it's been about 10 minutes. So welcome, everybody. My name is Wyatt. Um, I have been a part of the foundation for about actually a year now. Um, I started hosting calls a couple of months ago. Um, I kind of just reached out to Gabriel and my initial interest was really into like permaculture. So I'm a permaculture student and currently getting my teacher certification right now to be able to teach it. Um, it's kind of like one of my goals to be able to integrate this practical knowledge into our, our dreams here. Right. And um, so that's where my passion really started. And uh, I'm hoping to enthuse other people with it and create a space for sharing all that. Um, usually I kind of like let these just be a little bit free for all flow. Um, today I just have a little bit of like a prepared, um, kind of like slideshow that I just wanted to run through mainly with it's all quotes from the book. And I just like real fast wanted to touch on those and like, see if we could bring up discussion about them. Um, but you know, for has every, everybody here has, has read the books or is reading the books. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm thinking so. Some, some people, I I know some people are driving and can't talk and, um, Elizabeth, nice to see you book two. Oh, interesting. I just pulled some quotes, quotes from book two. I'm on book four. You are. That's my favorite book. My, oh yeah. It's, it's dense. Yeah. I gotta be like, I'm too tired to read this right now. It has to like fully. Yeah, the first time I read it, I, I I wouldn't change the situation, but I was actually on an airplane the first time I read it. And it's funny because I'm, you know, like they say in the disclaimer on the black covers, like read in nature, you know, the healing effects are amplified. And I just remember that when I was on that plane and I first read some of those sentences in that book, like I was like, I was not in that plane. Um, and after reading it since in different, you know, natural environments, it, it just has a ring to it. There's there's like, without a doubt, if someone's like, oh, what's your favorite book? Like, that's my favorite book. Yeah, it's mine so far, my favorite. Too. Mine too. It's awesome. I love that book. Yeah. I've yeah. read it so many times. It's yeah, just well, like every time I read it, I'm like, oh, I forgot that part. Right. 
Well, I mean, that's one, one aspect of like on the domain that we can try to recreate is these, um, you know, that book comes from a living um, uh, arrangement of plants, right? You know, mm. so everybody, yeah. everybody reads that book. And what, what's unique about the taiga is that the people who have, you know, cared for that space have maintained the original combination. Um, they've maintained the original combinations of the plants. Remember in book three, I think it is, um, no, it's book six, my bad. Vladimir's going and he's, you know, communicating with the son, right? And his son, you know, Vladimir says like, can you, you know, can you read this great book? And his son stands up and, you know, like starts looking off in the distance and like ever so slowly is like reading syllable by syllable. You know, he says, I can't read it as fast as Mama Anastasia, but I can still read it. It's my favorite book to read. It's made of happy letters. You know, he talks about mm -hmm. our language as having not happy letters and he starts reading and Vladimir's like, wait, 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 are you seeing the letters in space? And his son's like, looks at him dumbfounded. And he's like, you don't see the birch, Papa, and the maple, and the cedar, and the current bush, you know? And so it's like the combination of the, the Latin names, and then also, or the original names, and then the common names make up like a jumble of these letters, I guess. I'm not sure how that all works, or if it's, it was a very interesting concept, but you know, they talk about that book is available for anybody to read in space which is quite um, inspiring for me, at least, to try to mimic that. I mean, wouldn't you want your child to be raised up like reading some great book? Mm. Yeah. Um, all right, well, like I said, I have a little, tiny little thing I wanna show you guys. Um, and then I would please like, if you have anything you wanna share, bring up, um, these are just like straight up quotes from the book. And I really just felt like they, you know, not checklist, but I felt like this was really good for us to go back in and really see, you know, like what is a kin's domain? Because, you know, what's getting the media is trying so hard and so many different people have an idea of what this is. And so like literally rereading these for ourselves, I think is super important. And we don't, I'm not like obviously going to read through all this, but you know, everyone's going to, if they have a screen, they can scan little points. And then um, I just wanted to bring up a couple discussion points, you know, like the main thing here is, you know, where you would like to live in a climate that is favorable for you. And I know for me personally, that has been, you know, taking into account like perpetuity, like you know, like eternity, like I got to pick a space for that long. Like, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot for me to try to like take in. Um, I know that's caused me a little bit of, I wouldn't say anxiety, but just like pressure. I felt like, wow, I gotta, I gotta really, really dive deep here. I don't know if anybody else has felt that way. You know, like I really like, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because when you move to a place that you didn't connect with, like I'm living at right now, even though it's beautiful, it's just really different than when you live in your own space where you feel like at home, right. like everything kind of becomes a chore. Yeah, I can comment on that too, actually. I agree with you. I'm not sure who said that, but I'm in a really beautiful place right now, um, but it doesn't feel like home. And I'm like baffled sometimes as to why I don't feel like gardening and why I don't feel like fixing this like awful broken compost system that's actually kind of dangerous. <laughs> out in the, like, I don't feel like I'm not motivated to learn how to fix it. And, and I can kind of be hard on myself, but then I just have to remember that like my first goal is really to put my energy into figuring out like, where do I want to live? What place do I want to live? What connection to the land do I want to have? And instead of trying to use my head to like force myself to learn about these things um, and just recognize that when I feel it, like everything that I need to know, all of the books that I need, I don't have to collect like a stash of books and put them away, you know, forever. It's just in case, <laughs> just in case I need them. It's like in the moment that I'm ready to learn those things and that I have the right questions, they're going to come and the books will be available. The people will be available. Like my inner knowledge will be available on how to do it. So I hear, I hear you. I'm not being inspired in a, in a place. Yeah. I totally resonate with what you're saying too. Uh, same thing. And it's good to hear somebody else say out loud, actually, what I feel inside that I didn't know. 
um, Elizabeth, like the being hard on myself for not wanting to, like when you were talking, I was like, oh yeah, I really don't like the smell of eucalyptus. And the smell of eucalyptus is really strong outside right now. And I don't want to be outside, but I never, gardening, but I never really put those two together that it's because that doesn't feel good to me. You know, it was more like, I'm so lazy. <laughs> No, I don't, I don't like the smell and I can't get away from it. So, yeah, thank you for- Yeah, even I think in the books it says, she says, well, if you pick your space and you're next to a factory, I don't know if that's one of the ones you picked, Wyatt. No, then no. Then you're I, not going to have such a good time. Right, she yeah. Says. Yeah, she does talk about that. I, and I think that might have been her grandfather, <laughs> actually, in one point talking about how like- um, Oh, when was it? I, I, I'm remembering a couple conversations like Vladimir was talking about how these, um, yeah, she says something about location because then Vladimir gives the example of like these commercial vegetable, <clears throat> excuse me, vegetable plots that are like near this like large factory and Anastasia's like, yeah, like how could those be good for you? Um, and I think that's where they connect it with like the domains and I think it's really like an intuitive thing. You know, home is not something that's like, you know, you cross off on a checklist of like, this meets this, this meets this, this meets this. Like, we like to think that that's what our home is. You know, like I even have a checklist. I'm like, I want a spring. I want this. I want this. Uh, you know, I want a grove of these kind of trees. I have all that um, written down. But then again, it's like this other side of it. That's like, it's, it's really an internal feeling. Like, you know, I wish I would have found the quote, but like each man has a space, like each, you know, we each have that plot of earth that is like waiting for us and like feels that same like reciprocal connection. Um, so yeah, it's inspiring. It's totally, totally hear me. I'm like, you're just resonating. Where so. are you, Elizabeth? Oh. <laughs> um, I have all those things too. And for some reason, I still don't, it's like, it's like, I, I don't know. It's like, I'm being ungrateful or something, but I know that's not the thing. Like I'm super grateful. Right. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, and I, I know. Oh, I just asked, where are you? Talking to me. Elizabeth. Oh, I'm yeah. in Oregon. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah it's, I uh, just met a girl from there last week and she was saying that it was so dangerous that she moved to Florida. <laughs> that's actually where I'm trying where to she was. Was. <laughs> It's dangerous. Uh, okay. Really? She said Oregon was so dangerous that she moved to Florida. Yeah. I don't know where she was. She was an acupuncturist know. lady. Wow. She said she had a bullet go through her bedroom window. So she's like, I'm out of here. Mm. Wow. I haven't had anything like that. <laughs> Yikes. But follow that feeling if you're feeling that that's not your space. Yeah, I mean, I lived on the <laughs> coast in Oregon in one of the most beautiful parts, I would argue, of the U.S. And I've seen a lot of the US um, traveling around for um, quite a while. And I lived on, um, you know, Elizabeth, you know where Medford's at, and then you know where Grants Pass is, and then what is that, one, 199, um, the Smith River yeah. Mountain Pass. Um, and yeah. so, I, yeah. Maybe one, 101? Yeah, yeah. So I was in Gold Beach, and, you know, like oh, I yeah. could, I could pick from a number of five different crystal clear swimming holes. Like I swam like almost every day I would swim in the ocean, you know, like there was all these trails, but yet like exactly what you guys are saying, like it did not feel like home. Like I was in this absolutely like picture as like, I'd been dreaming since a kid of like living in this place that like, you know, and, and, and then I'm there and two years flew by and it's like, wait, I don't, I don't resonate with this though at the, at that level of home. So I think we really have to honor that and really use that to guide where we need to be at. And, and um, I think community plays a part in it too. You know, like we, we communicate with people, we, we talk with people, we get a few feel, feel and we're like, Hey, I, I might want to go there and, and visit. And um, yeah. It feels so good to hear you say that. Just thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. what's, what's going to be cool is when we start getting these settlements created you know, people are going to be able to travel and go there and check out that place, you know? And so the vibe uh, of the spaces. Yeah. Like if I want to go to Maine and like, I've never been there, like, cool. I get to go to a conscious <laughs> community that is like living how I want to live. 
And then I get to like, you know, fit myself in, in their life for a couple seconds and then observe like, does this resonate? Is there anything missing? And I, I think I'm looking forward to that opportunity. If it's not for myself, for, for anybody else, you know, for the future generations or whatever. Um, because like, <clears throat> cool, it's hard to know, like you move into a town, like I'm sure a lot of you have that experience of moving into a place and you're like, oh, this is cool, or this is not cool. And then it, your perception gets a complete 180 within like a month. You're like, actually, this is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, we've been here for two years and it's really hard. I'm in Florida. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think like um, just to like segue in a little bit, like, you know, these other quotes, um, you know, people, have, you guys have probably, you, you've, if you've read the books, you've read these things. Um, you know, the main thing is like outlining, like a, it's a living space, you know? So like a fence should be living and your house should be living as well. I, that's not really talked about, you know, she, she talks a little bit about like how your house um, doesn't really need to be that thing of an importance, but I, I like know she would agree that like, of course your house needs to be made out of the most natural materials possible and feasible for you that doesn't mean everybody needs to go out and start making cob houses like that's a lot of work <laughs> but you know i think um taking this theme of like when she talks about a fence that natural living part you know the domain should be something that completely feeds and um nourishes every aspect of you and it's hard for dead materials to do that so <laughs> um yeah, I think this information, yeah. everybody's <clears throat> about that. Um, well, I had a, a question on that too, if I could elaborate a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I So I've actually been to a few places in the US and there hasn't been a place like on this land that I've really felt that home. But I feel really, really curious about what it would be like to actually be in Russia on that land and feel yeah. like, is that my home there? And um, I like, I was pretty much convinced that that's where I had to go because I mean, there wasn't a lot of community around, you know, with us in, in the United States until just now. Um, and so, yeah, I guess, do other people feel like that? I mean, I suppose I was in Europe for a, like a three week period of time at one point and I felt more at home there than I do on this land. But like, but I'm just, I have this like just heartfelt curiosity about like, what does it feel like to put my bare feet on the land over in Siberia, for example, like I actually really do like cold. Um, even though I feel like more cold to Florida right now, I have to be in, I have to be in the United States for until my, I have a dog. So until my dog is um, happy, you know, in, in the other, in the other realms, <laughs> um, I am going to stay here, but um, yeah, I don't know. Do other people feel like they have a call over to Russia or is that just me being like, oh, I have to go to Russia because this is where it started. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I think a lot of people are um, thinking about or at least wanting to go there to see and get a feel for these communities. What do you think, Wyatt? Look, I, I think it's natural. Like, like, let's use our rationale <laughs> here. Like, Russia is succeeding. So for us, we immediately, like, we know that there's resistance here. We know that there is, it, it hasn't ha quite happened, materialized yet. And so I think our brains are like, okay, you know, I want to follow the path of least resistance. So let me go to the space that it's not being resisted very much, you know? And I think that's totally okay. Um, my, where my heart goes immediately is like, if I leave, who's going to take care of this land then? that's immediately yeah. where my brain goes. Like I can go to those beautiful places. Like, I mean, listen, I love islands, you know, I'd love to live on an island, but it's not my homeland. And I feel that, you know, and I think we all have that space, but yours, like you might, Elizabeth, you might go over to Russia and like meet your soulmate, like literally. And then it's like, you know, like, mm -hmm. so my story isn't your story, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, I guess where is that homeland? You know, yeah, I think that's the that's the spirit. If you if, if you feel like this is your homeland, then like then it is. Um, but if there's just this, and you know, I have felt this since I was a kid. I mean, just feeling like there was something that was off, something that was wrong, something that was out of place, and I didn't know what it was. And I try to tell my family, my parents, and and I think they would blame it on like growing pains or something like that. You know, 
but just like mom something in life doesn't feel right like what is it and she wasn't able to nobody was able to give me answers um but yeah so there's just this like seeking that's happening and I think that's totally like what's what's being asked of us right now anyway but totally I I I nominate Ariane on the call to like maybe one day down the red line like in a couple months like we should do a uh, a meditation for really like feeling like the homeland, you know, we've done a lot of visualizing the space. Um, but like, w w where is home, you know, and I think a lot of people have that going on right now is like, um, I know, I know, think it's where community is sometimes. Yeah, that's very true. Sometimes I feel it's where community is. Because yeah. that's what makes it a home, you know, do you guys think we're all waiting? Like, does a part of you feel like you're waiting for others? I mean, I think this is a real question that needs to be asked. Do you feel like That's you're- That's a good question. Yeah, are you waiting for others? Like, no. you, to then do it. What I feel, no. what I feel is that- it would be nice some... to have others. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, go ahead. May I go? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What I feel sometimes with the home, as I'm listening, because home can have such a variety of flavors and meanings to us that maybe it's maybe being more kind of focused and saying, where, where am I meant where to I be? Meant what land am I meant to be on caring for right now at this time? Um, because home could mean the realization that if you feel you are, you've been here many times before, if you believe in that, it could be a lot of different places, right? So I think we have to focus the, in the here and the now and at this time. And it could also be, um, you know, connected more to a, a star family or a galactic family. And maybe that's where you're kind of coming from with, are you waiting for more people? And I think there's truth in both of that, both of those different things is that sometimes it's the timing um, and then it's the place. Because I have lived in a lot of different places in this US of A, but I know that I wanna travel more to other lands and I have never really quite, quite felt at home at home, but I felt like I knew when it was time to move and where I wanted to go. But I have not had a clear intuitive impulse about what's next either, about where, where I'm to be. And so I feel like I'm either in this pause mode and I've gotten some affirmations, but yet I'm in this big pause mode. So thanks for allowing me to share. I hope that was helpful. Definitely, definitely. Oh my gosh, thank you. So wanna honor everything that you're saying. What, what really came up for me is like, yeah, like the here and the now is important. Like what, what was coming up for me is like those different feelings that you were talking about. Like we're drawn to the areas that we feel comfortable um, and feel a connection to and that can mean so many different places <laughs> I mean really so it's I that is like really I think a pearl of wisdom um, I'm going to definitely hold that like within myself of, of focusing on this this moment this life in this body with this blood with this brain um, in this heart and these people you know and really like moving forward in that sense and not of like you know, and it's really involving a lot of clearing, you know, I, I think um, sometimes it, yeah, we hold on to these subconscious and subtle feelings of like what home could be and I, a specific idea of it too. Um, and one other thing that came up for me um, is, is the tie to comfort, you know, we have this what's comfortable for us and I, you know, Anastasia talks about like it should be comfortable. It shouldn't be something that's necessarily hard, but um, I think there's just those are, those are things to keep in mind, you know, especially what Karuna, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, um, was saying, you know, like, yes. this is really like the here and the now. I, that, I, re I received some confirmation there for things I'm doing. So I really appreciate you sharing that. 
Yeah, and I thanks for reflecting you have to it gather back. yourself too. Like what she was saying, like she feels like she's in standby mode. That's a really important place to be totally. before you make a leap, before you move somewhere. Like just listen to what life is telling you and then make a choice. Instead of going, 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 just take a pause. Right, right. Hey, hey guys, this important. is, this is, can you hear me? Yeah, Peter. Yeah. Hey, hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, hey. Welcome. I wanted to say, I wanted to say something about, uh, you know, the, the thought of home and what you were guys just talking about, because um, like for me, what really appeals to me is having like two or three different places around the country, honestly. So I don't have to feel confined or like one place is home you know I can if I want cold and snow and cold weather if I feel like that in you know the winter I can I can go north or if I want if I want kind of you know more uh more heat I can go south so that's that's something that really appeals to me is having you know, multiple kin's domain uh, kind of around around the U.S. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I certain climates, I think, offer that variety as well. I think something that my brain jumps to immediately is there are places that have that diversity of, you know, like there's there's natural rhythms. So, you know, how i don't know it's like going to an island every time it gets cold if you're born in a cold place like yeah i i feel like there is some natural rhythms there however like i know in my state like we get to like tropical like panama costa rica summers and then we get like sometimes feels like tundra winters so it's like we get this huge diversity and then you go to places like you know the islands and hawaii and places like that and it's very a little bit more consistent but I, I very much honor and hear what you're saying, Peter. I think we all have that um, thing within us that's wanting that ideal climate at any point in the time. Uh, is what? It, it, correct me if I'm wrong. If that's kind of like what you're saying here, is like really wanting. Yeah, well, it doesn't. It doesn't come so much down to like the climate. I guess that's a you know that's uh, uh, that's an important aspect. But I think it's just being able to have you know the freedom and the ability to move around and not, not, I, f I felt like from maybe what Karuna was saying that there was, he or maybe others that there was hesitancy to commit to one place, or maybe you asked a question that, you know, are you waiting for other people to kind of make the move? Right. Um, so yeah, I, I think the ability to be nomadic a little bit really appeals to me. And um, just just to just to have variety. Does it make you feel like a little bit freer? Uh, variety. Yeah, totally, totally. Like freedom, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Peter, I'm, I'm curious actually, there, there, are, there were people who were like, wiz well, not wizards, I guess, but wise men. Um, even in Vidru's times, um, they would travel to the different domains and settlements and um, be teachers. And so maybe what you're referring to are people who feel more called to be uh, like a, a nomadic wise man um, mm -hmm. and not just like integrated just with like a family domain in one place. And that's, I feel like something that's a possibility um, and to honor yeah. that that might be a path, a true path for somebody. Yeah, I mean, the, bar, the, the bards travel all over in Russia, you know, and like, I think like artists and musicians and, and creators and facilitators, healers, like that, they've always traveled, they go to where they're needed at that time. And it doesn't mean that they don't have a resting place that they like out of, you know, they like the best out of all of their different locations. But um, yeah, like, um, you might totally just be channeling that, Peter. You might you might have something to offer our community, like really respect and honor that like feeling within you because it it totally could lead you into being um, a vital asset in many different ways. I think we all have to like honor that. Some people I think are like ready just to like go to their domain, yeah. like I'm gardening and I'm done, you know? And then there's others who are like, well, 
yeah but i want to kind of be still like integrate you know it's we have to totally honor all that yeah well i, I am you know talking about like wise men are here i i do i i do like healing arts work specifically in in uh you know nutrition and health and, and, and whatnot but uh so i so i am kind of a healer and or I, I not kind of but i am a healer and um the other the other point i wanted to make relative wow. to what elizabeth said is i do i do still have this even though I, I want the freedom and the ability to move around like i still do have this deep desire to have a family and have children and you know have that stability in some sense too so i don't know i don't know how to like <laughs> you know mix that all up Right. Well, you know, I think, um, yeah, it's a journey for everybody personally. I'm sure, I'm sure there's other community members that could speak to that. You'll figure it out, Peter. Yeah. When you're ready, yeah. when you find your places, when you find your, your love. Yeah. I feel like for me thinking about, okay, am I waiting on other people? that doesn't feel right. I actually feel like people are waiting on me um, to bring them together, to share a vision, to manifest. Uh, like, I feel like I'm the, I'm the one that's gonna make the first move. <laughs> In fact, I have this like really, I don't, like I said, I don't really like where I live, but I would be happy to set something up for other people here. <laughs> And then leave and go somewhere where I want to live. But um, yeah. I live right next to a golf course. And it has a huge, uh, it's like the largest public golf course in, in um, the northern part of America. And um, it has a, a huge clubhouse. And I have this idea of like, what if we just ripped out the golf course and started gardens all over it and made the clubhouse like the the place That's you come to happen <laughs> food and like you know get your body work done and where you know the kids go the parents are out like i have this yeah i know <laughs> super we'd have to make res be raised beds on the golf course until all the toxins can get the hell out of the garden but out of the ground but um i don't know like i, I i'm kind of i like I like dreaming like that, you know, but I don't want to live here. Yeah. I just want to set it up for everybody and then go <laughs> and then go to the next place that I do want to live and set it up, you know? And, and so that's kind of what I I'm feeling, but I don't feel like the world is ready for me. I don't feel like this place is ready for me, but maybe it is. I think Ariane has something she wants to add here. Yeah. I'd like to share my experience with my partner. So what we're doing is my partner and I are getting really clear on what we want on the living image of the land and how it looks and especially how it feels. And we take great delight and joy in seeing that every day, talking about it every day, doing research on how the gardens are going to look, how it's going to feel when we jump in the pond, the flowers, like we really are giving ourselves the whole tactile experience of what this is going to be, where it's going to be, how it's going to show up, how we're going to afford it, how we're going to, how we're going to, how we're going to, how we're going to, we don't, we don't pay any attention to that. And I want all of you to know it's all coming our way. We literally just had someone yesterday offer us uh, literally a, a 3.7 five kids domain space, which we're not going to take on the mainland because we're not quite ready for it financially. And that's totally fine too. But my point is, is that I, I personally am not going to put a lot of uh, emphasis on the how uh, I'm seeing like every single day, putting the emphasis on like what it's going to look like and how it's going to feel. And, and the details, like even this morning, I was reading a book about the square foot gardening. I don't know if you've heard about that, but it's like, a phenomenal, like a phenomenal gardening uh, method. And it's, it's incredible. And I was just getting so excited and we're reading together and we're drawing diagrams and everything is coming to us. You know, it takes a degree of trust to really let go and to, to believe that 
everything is going to line up at the perfect time. And a part of me does want to kind of jump ahead and control. But then I remember like the magic <laughs> that's coming to us. It's incredible. So I, that's the way we're doing it. I realize everybody's going to do it differently, but I definitely wanted to share that with all of you. There's a lot of truth and magic and like power in uh, like really, really trusting and taking all the steps prior, you know, literally painting that image. So it's so real and so alive. You can really taste it, touch it, feel it. You know, I just I wanted to share that in case that inspires any of you. When does anything that you say usually not inspire? It's always concerned about imagery. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. Like if you guys not checked out uh, page 130, book four, the footnote at the bottom of the page in the last couple of paragraphs, it's like imaginary thinking, like what Arianne's talking about is like, oh my God, oh my gosh. Yeah, Amber's gonna read it for us right now. I think that's how I met my husband because I visualized him. It says uh, imaginative thinking. The Russian term refers to the specific ability to visualize in one's mind a vivid and detailed image, not just a fantasy. Yeah, like she they had mentioned that in the page and then the footnote kind of describes like what that word was meaning. But I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm totally right on there. Like I have multiple images that come up for me, you know, because I think it's, you, you have to visualize and then I, I think there's, it's in our world, like we don't even need to focus on the doing because we're so used to doing. We're so used to like jumping into like whatever our plan is. So it's very, uh, you know, feels like a big relief to just like trust and surrender into that. And then know that like you'll show up when you need to show up and you'll do what you need to do when the opportunity presents itself. Um, yeah, Anastasia even says something about like, you can choose your own destiny. She's like, you're welcome to like, put your feels out there so that you can get whatever it is that you want to get. She says you can change it if you decide to. Yeah, that's what's so inspiring. She says a lot of stuff. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's so inspiring, man. You know? Um, yeah. I, I like this one little bold point that I have on here. Like everything, um, every, is it, I can't read that. Everything in the vicinity that will be on your land must cherish and nourish. And like really feeling like, what does that feel like then? You know, like how does that, how, when you wake up in the morning, wow. Like what does it feel like to walk out your door when everything greets you? Everything is healing you. Everything knows you, nourishes you with every breath, every step. Like anything you taste and smell, it's like only adding to your life. Um, I feel like, and, and maybe you guys can relate to this experience in our our day-to-day -day lives today, we're like making choices between that which gives us life and that, that which takes us away. You know, like I have to do work on my laptop, like that doesn't really give me life. You know, like I can, oh yeah, this isn't creative and I'm doing this, but like, it's not the same as me going outside and like going on a hike. Um, it's so interesting to really visualize and as Arianne was saying, feel like, what is that, what is that type of lifestyle, you know, really like in your body feel, the tactile, the physical feeling. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I just had this quote here about the, um, you know, like how she arranges things and, you know, like we can take this, it's, it's kind of going more on like a little bit of a, the, the philosophy behind it, um, but the philosophy behind the kin's domain and us go being on there. You know, there's there's pretty practical notes in here that Anastasia, you know, talks about um, how how we should go about planting things and how we should do that. But I think we all figure that out and we'll all make it work for our own area. You know, we're, we don't need to be dogmatic about anything, you know. In fact, she she very much like talks about rid yourself of dogma um so all these people that are like you can only grow things this way you must add this you know no 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 no, no. um so yeah yeah i've had good luck this year with tomatoes i really? have some big ones i had horrible yeah. luck 
Oh my gosh. They're my, so good. I had like, I don't know, probably 20 something with tomato plants. And they like, they, I, oh, I wow. think I, I think I let them go too long in their pots because they were pretty big and I had them in big pots, you know, like half gallon pots. And, um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I think I left them, you know, there, there's a, there's a transplant stage where they are absolutely prime. You know, it's like, um, Oh, so you didn't put them out of the pot. No, I did, but I think I did it too late. You know, like how... Um, oh, too like, late. Yeah, there's supposed yeah, like, to be only like 16 leaves before yeah. like, you pot it or something. My husband told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a child... It stunts them. Yeah, like a child who's like separated yeah. from his family. Like when he's super young, like, you know, they might not even really have that like... They'll have a subconscious memory, but not that... It's like, I think there's just that... I That's how my brain thinks. There's this perfect window where the growth is going to accelerate in the plant. And it's not going to be like, whoa... What did you do? My home is different. My roots, what, what the soil is? No, 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 no. This is strange. If there's like that ripe zone. Um, yeah, I love this quote too. You know, to me, it, what inspires me about a domain is really thinking about how harmoniously everything is going to be working together because, you know, like um, being in the agricultural field, you know, and really having con constant discussions and debates with people about, like, we don't need to keep plowing the land, you know, like talking to these professors and talking about like, what's the best management strategy for your place? Like, like it's not clearing everything, you know, like why, like why, why do we need to rake everything? Why do we need to just, you know, when we get our first plot of land, I guarantee all of you are not the first thing you're going to think is not, well, let me get a tractor and plow the entire thing. Like, or let me, you know, herbicide the entire field to kill everything. Um, it feels really good to trust to fall back into the lap of nature and of how a forest works and how prairies work and just really like give yourself completely over to that great harmony. Um, you know, it totally is going to inform us like, and by studying the natural cycles, we'll know when the time is to plant certain things. We'll know when we need to take action and when we don't need to take action. Um, yeah. Yeah. I hope this stuff like isn't boring for anybody. Like for me, it's really solidifying like what a, what this is for me. So I, I that was my inspiration behind bringing some of this stuff in today. Cause I didn't, you know, I don't want to make it like education, but you know. Can you go back to that last one? Quick yeah, yeah. Ahead, some observation coming up. Yeah. Um, so I've thought about this before, but I'm, it's coming up now. Um, so when it comes to like eating meat or not eating meat, so vegetarian, vegan, that that whole thing, um, I I first on my journey when I first um, started like to when I first tried a vegan diet, um, one of the things that people would say to me who didn't want me to be a vegan was that that the plants are harmed too, like they can't run away from you, but they might not be saying that they want to like they're not telling you that or they can't tell you in the same way that an animal can that it doesn't want to be eaten kind of thing because it can't run away. And I didn't like that, like eating, eating plants is harming a living thing as well. And I didn't, you know, and then that led me to like, okay, maybe I need to be a breatharian. Maybe I need to do like this. And so like that just went me, like I went on a whole thing <laughs> with that. Um, but when it comes to growing plants like this, I actually think that there's some truth in that because like the plants, they will tell us when they want to be eaten and when they don't. And like with the cosmic energy that they have, like there is actually a right time when you're walking through your garden and you get that feeling like this is the apple that I need to eat now. And if I'm just like consuming on, on, a, on a, like a large quantity and things and I'm not listening to myself and it actually is detrimental, it can be detrimental. Um, you know, and so just like really listening to I don't know how to solve that, you know, other than just like, Hey, I need to, I need to be on my domain. You know, so what's the best thing that I can do now? Um, but I'm just like, I want to like honor this quote more and just, and realize that like, actually there's some truth to that. Yeah. And um, just, to, just to elaborate on your point, um, Vladimir released a couple of new chapters in book one. And um, in those chapters, there's a story about the divine diet again. It's a kind of interesting how consistent that theme comes up. Um, and the man was talking about, I believe it was this like, oh, I can't remember if it was like kind of a monk type figure or this religious guy, but he, um, he talks about how after 10 days, after 10 days of eating in this divine way, your body 
this on the cellular level reprograms itself and it knows then what to take in at the right quantity and when it's tuned in it's not distracted by you know like uh, cravings of before um sure. you know. and, and that makes total sense to me because it's like yeah, when, yeah. Like it's, you know, it's easy in the summertime for me, like when I have a garden that's pumping out like all of this ripe nutrition, like to really eat that way, like really to, you know, just be like, I'm hungry, I'm going to go, okay, like take a walk and oh, it's a nice piece of lettuce or, you know, uh, that herb. But in the wintertime, it's different for me, you know, and I find that my body is going more off like, oh, this is, you know, this sounds good, you know, like, oh, yeah, that, that taste sounds good or like, I'm hungry, you know, let me create, you know, like, it's going to be a thing, I think a change. And that's, you know, food is a sensitive topic. <laughs> God, there's so many things in the media about food, you know. So it's kind of hard because it's like, when you start telling people what they can and cannot eat, like, you know, I don't think that's our job as ringing cedars readers. Um, you know, we just have to like point the finger back at like this divine nutrition and really, you know, um, yeah. At least that's how I feel. Yeah, I mean, Anastasia, she says that um, that there will always be more and more hints on what you need to do and how to do it. But yeah, your body is the only one that you need to listen to. Mm, totally, totally righteous. Yeah, eat as you breathe. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, that takes me back to the story. Um, you know, like how they they saw it on the this writing on this wall and um like the the high the priest who wrote it like you know went you know his life passed on um as soon as he wrote it and like nobody really understood it and you know like that's what's so interesting to think about that wh why something like that would be hidden and why it was hidden in the first place um wow yeah well our kin's domains are going to be the cornucopia of this nutrition for us. I'm excited for it. I don't know about you guys. Like I like, I like have like, you know, daydream visions about like, Oh, I'm just waking up now. Oh, Oh, that, wow. That current's very interesting looking and like without distracting, like my thought, I'm just like, you know, or, you know, grabbing a couple of things here and there. And, um, I, it's such a beautiful way of life to like be so into the creative process in your children in that energy of love. Like what I've noticed, I'm pleased. I am so excited to hear somebody's experience on this is like when you are in a state of bright feeling in love, you do not require as much food. Like physically, you don't feel as hungry. And I have noticed that like after ecstatic dance, after these calls, um, like it's, it's almost like a, like, I feel like I'm getting plugged into a current of satiation. You know what I'm trying to say? It's like something that's not physical though. And it's like, it's just charging me up. Like I don't need to eat food to get that little bit of, you know, prana or chi from it. I'm just, I'm already like, you know, I'm sure somebody has something they need to say. I would, I would hope so. I I'm like, so ready to be inspired by that. Nothing. Yeah, I'll say I'll, I'll, I totally agree with you. I've, I've had the same, uh, experience, whether it's, um, you know, just like you said, love or, or, uh, you know, community, community events or gatherings or whatever it is like, like bringing in that, that higher energy gives you some sort of satiation it feeds you in in some way that you know other than putting food in your mouth mm, yeah yeah it's interesting that we're talking about this because tomorrow there's a, an event um these two people Teresa and Stephen uh who run own stream networks and they uh interview oracle girl often and they have a series of interviews that they do with her and other people that are about like creating a bright future. And tomorrow is a woman um, named Judy Coons, and I'll put the link, I don't know if it'll work in the chat, but um, that they're interviewing, who is basically living off of air and love. Right. <laughs> And, uh, and she's explaining how she got there and how she's doing that, you know, it's like another way out of uh, the food system 
Um, but uh, I think it's kind of cool that that's happening tomorrow and that we're talking about it here. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, man. Yeah. It's nice synchronicity. But yeah. I think it's, um, I think it would be wonderful. I mean, how much time and effort and everything do we spend to feed ourselves to keep going? It kind of feels like like the bank systems or the money or things, like it's something that's not quite necessary. Like, right. you know, we don't, like, why do this cost, this house and this land only cost a certain amount of money? Like, why do I owe money to the bank for, it only costs however much money to build it, right? Like, why do I owe, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars more now to the bank to, to be able to stay in it, you know? And it's kind of a, a similar thing. It's like this outdated um, way that we've been living that makes no sense, that keeps us slaves to a, um, a, a cyclical uh, thing that just benefits the few. Um, Totally. It keeps us all, all you and know, it, enslaved. I mean, like, I, I don't know why we need to be working for a living, for example. Like, why? <laughs> that makes no sense. Like, you know, why are we working to live? I, like, there's a middleman there that just, like, <laughs> cut him out, right? Like, we're just, we're just living. Like, okay, great, we're living. I don't know. It's something to think about. It's because it's what we were born into and used to, but when you actually stop and step back and go, do I really believe in it, need it, feel it, you know, fully, then you go, oh, no, you know, like this past year, I realized that eating a giant dinner is one of the worst things you can do for your body. And when I stopped for a little while, just to like reset my body, I went, oh, it's also really stressful <laughs> and it's not something I want to do at the end of the day. And is it really feeding my body? Like all those little things. And you understand from Oracle girl, like that slave self of doing what you think you're, you know, being good and following the rules and doing the thing. Cause it's what you do and not thinking about it, but then gosh, thinking about it going, am I hungry? You know, intuition. I'm walking by these, um, we have poha berries, the, these gooseberries. I really want one of those. Ooh, that sounds so good. Thinking about it, going in my mouth, going in my body. Like, yeah, that's what I need right now. And then going that step further, like you're talking about the woman tomorrow. I'd love to watch that because it's all energy. Everything is energy. Why does it have to come from food? Why can't it come, you know, sunlight? sunlight I'm in the sun I am being fed nutrients right now without putting anything in my mouth and like getting it <laughs> it's amazing it's incredible and I just it's it's like a, a perception shift and a and then also having your bodies be adapted one way and then getting out of the cycle and adapting to the I always talk about diapers you know like I trained my daughter how to use a diaper they don't come out knowing how to use a diaper. It's like, we don't come out needing to have meals at 8 a.m., noon, and 6 p.m. or whatever. It's a, it's a trained habit. Then you have to untrain and get your body to remember what it really wants, not what it was told to do. I don't know. I totally am right on there with you guys. <laughs> I think you're highlighting something here. Um, so somebody break out the highlighters, um, you know, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think we, uh, you know, when we think of living in these domains, I think what the subtle image that comes up for a lot of people is where am I going to get my food? Um, I think that's the biggest thing, you know, housing is simple. Uh, people are like, well, I'll either build a Tesla generator. I'm going to have solar, or, you know, whatever. But people think about, I'm either going to have to like buy food. It's like food is, this, it, and it's almost irrational, but it's very, I think, interesting to really like realize what an illusory boundary that is. It's non-existent. It's not real. Everything has been prepared. Everything has been curated and created and it's already ready. Like how many varieties, millions of varieties <laughs> of plants are literally ready to grow and serve you in like whatever way, in any nutrient requirement that you could possibly need. 
any disease that you possibly could have. Like, I mean, our domains are the epicenters of like the most perfect nutrition. Um, I remember in book five, I think, or is it book seven? Can't remember. Um, Vladimir's talking to grandfather, you know, and he talks about, you know, the outline for the domain. And, you know, he mentions that there should be 300 perennial plants on the domain, you know, like those are plant at once and forget it, you know, and that's what's so cool to me is to think about like, we don't need to be, you know, gardening is, can be a hobby. It doesn't need to be this thing that we're like, okay, on my domain, I got to plan out this gigantic garden now to feed my family. And, you know, we got to make sure to have all these food reserves and, you know, like grow a couple of, you know, nut trees and your grandchildren will never grow hungry ever, ever. And that's, what's amazing to me is like the, the things that are the solutions to our illusory, you know, boundaries or problems there's the, the answers are already there they've been there in nature for thousands of years like that's what's so relieving to me is it's not like i need to like invent some new system of gardening or invent some new system of food storage like the best is already there um that's what's inspiring for me at least thanks arian appreciate that um so i think we got food covered Let's let's take our imagery and take our creative power into the home now, because, you know, like I remember Ellen Mary, I think she's on this call. She was telling me about Moonwood, um, you know, and like we're all we're, we're looking into these different homes now. I was looking with her at like these geodesic um, dome homes. And I think housing is very uh, is a big thing for people. So I'm curious how you guys all feel about that. If it's something that's really in your mind that you're like, hey, I'm, I'm pretty set on my house design um, and what that, you know, what is the home play for you and your creative process, your, your role um, as a creator, you know, in that. Nobody, nobody. I can say something. <laughs> um, it's I, so I like to I like to ask like um, I wonder. Okay, so I believe that I can definitely build a house. I believe that there's that like, that's something that I could do. I think I have a, sometimes a hard time um, a hard time imagining this because there's a part of me that wonders like if me or maybe my kids will actually need a house. And like, I really love to push my, the, the boundaries of human potential. That's something that like, I love to do and think about. And so I'm just curious, I'm like, does my domain even have a house or is it just a garden? Or maybe like I plant a, what are those trees in Florida? Mm -hmm. a, a, banyan? Mm -hmm. a, banyan, a banyan tree. And you can plant those things and then like you can grow them and they'll be like a jungle gym, you know? Um, so. I'm, I'm just curious if anybody else has taken it that far, I suppose. But I would love to hear what people, like the houses. I mean, like, I think that that's probably realistically gonna be something that I build, but I just like to take this question far. <laughs> Elizabeth, that's so cool. Cause I was just reading the quote Wyatt put up there. Your, your grandchildren will build a wooden house out of the trees that their grandfather planted and their father and mother loved. But I, I thought to myself, but I wonder if they actually harvested the trees or if they were living trees <laughs> and, and they were just more of a, a shelter. And I was just thinking that, and then you mentioned about the banyan tree, which is an amazing tree, you know? So I think it's all kinds of potentials and what feels best to us right now, you know, like as we're planning, because I think it might change. But totally. I loved everything that everyone's shared on the call tonight because you've taken it to such high levels and it's rare when you get a group of people who are talking about, you don't really need to plow. You might not need to actually plant your garden the way you used to. You might not even need a house. Like where do you ever hear these kinds of the concepts? So I feel like I'm definitely in my company. You know, this is all wonderful, wonderful thoughts. And Wyatt, thank you for putting and the slides together because oh dude I, it's I, so cool to have the structure and to follow the conversation thank you for that 
No problem. Yeah, honestly, I'm there's no shame here. Like I totally just like kind of threw these together at the last minute, but I because I was finding myself feeling like, you know what, we need um whose call was it? It was somebody's call. Oh, no, actually it was a I was having an eye gazing session with my sister and we both realized that our brains, hearts, minds and creative potential work great when we have a focus point. And so, cause we were both looking into each other's eyes and we were like, wow, like the meditative like state that we were instantly able to tap into was phenomenal. And so I've tried to like, kind of, um, infuse that into a lot of my life. And I, I just felt like in this call, like, um, you know, taking, you know, you, everybody showed up here, um, for, for a reason, and hopefully they can leave with gaining some new sense of like relief or inspiration about um, their their domain and like less pressure. I think that's the biggest thing is like, there's this, there's this like pressure to perform or there's the, all these things like it really, like this is a fun process. This is a spontaneous process. Um, and one thing I wanna hit on like what you're saying, Ellen, is like the, it's so, it is so cool to see like, we don't need these structures and don't need these things. And when we go deep and we like feel and ask ourselves, like, what do the, what does that mean? I think it's like, we start to see things as insulators, right? Like, and if we're an electrical current, like we don't want to insulate anything. Like we want to be plugged into everything. We want to be plugged into the cosmos as like much as we can. And like, that's not so etheric anymore. Like, it's not like this, something, you know, that was being said along, you know, like, if you need to look at science to like validate that for yourself, like there's science out there now that shows how intricately connected your every cell in your body, you know, is with everything. And, you know, like houses with metal roofs, like Ellen, you were pointing that out in our call, like people like are not as, um, may, maybe you can elaborate on this more, like their, their abilities, I think it was, you said, like their abilities aren't as sharp, right? Am I saying it right, Ellen? There's some, some researchers who have looked at what's bioharmonic, what's best for the living vitality force that's passing through the human body. And metal is one of those things that acts as a, like a frequency disruptor. And so somebody just posted a new house design on the greater reset, which is a sharing platform that was happening in Texas and Mexico recently. And I saw it and it was like this mesh, metal mesh impregnated with cement that you could like water and then it would harden and like a steel frame and like everything in my body said, no, <laughs> like that, that's not going to be bioharmonic for the body. It can be affordable. You can shape it to you know, something that you like. It also terms. lasts a very long time, I've heard. Yeah. Something and you don't have to change, supposedly. Yeah. But it, it just didn't feel like alive and made out of the energy of nature and what is what we're part of. So, you know, other people have different criteria. And then just like you were saying, why about we can't dictate what other people should eat or that we even know the answers for other people. But I think if we follow what lights us up inside and what feels really um, coherent to us, what, what feels like a yes versus a no, we'll be guided to the materials and the land and the, and the frequency of that. So each person I think will know. And for me, the no metal, rings true but it may not for somebody else and and i like um you know i'm attracted to cob because of all the shapes you can make with it but the bioceramic material that they're using in the geo ships the geodesic dome homes that are coming out soon those have a um, health factor non-toxic durability you know all of that 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 sounds really good to me and, and as Anastasia says, maybe by the time we're ready, we'll get a new idea and those materials be, be ready when we're building the structures that we want. Or like 
Elizabeth said, we might decide we don't even need a structure because we're so integrated with our surroundings. And like if I'm in the, there's like five inches of snow outside right now. And I think, oh, it sounds nice to not have shelter, but like right now I'm like under a blanket and why you've got a fire in the background. So I think I'm not ready for that yet, but it doesn't mean I don't dream about it and think at some point, maybe I won't need what I think I need right now. So, but I excited. Yeah, and I also think implementing maybe outdoor indoor living like having space that's outside, but it's inside. So you have the air, you have no windows, you just have like mesh to keep mosquitoes out, something like that. Yeah, one of my- a good, a good middle ground. Totally. Yeah, I had always had this vision of like separate little huts connecting and then mm -hmm. like it was all outdoors so it was like 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 the huts were enclosed or you know the circular homes but then there was like you know little small ones and it was like there's walkways between them and it it might make a cool shape yeah that's a garden, good idea gardens and trees and oh yeah um it depends i guess where you are because i just bought some land in peru and it's desert so we're not going to be able to plant any trees or things like maybe just the ones that grow there by themselves so when I visualize it, I think it's a good idea to see those maybe three different domes and then a middle space where we can do yoga and stuff in the middle. And yeah. Cook, maybe. You you can I you like can that. Def, you can definitely regreen the desert though, Joanne. You can definitely regreen. I know, it. I really want to figure it out. It's it's not hard. I, I it. it's not hard. It's well, you so, need water. There's no water. Yeah, but trees are condensers, right? So like the fact there's na native species that you can you can set up a microclimate for your native species that can tolerate the harsher and then by doing little tiny things you start to capture water like there's a phenomenal um it's a well-noted permaculture example in new mexico of like this house was literally like in the desert like in the desert and they like created okay. an oasis like an oasis like peach that's what i'm looking for and fruit trees mm -hmm. and like Oh yeah. From um, the house, you just like get the water to water the plant. Well, it was like a 10 year process before the ground was able to yeah. hold these, you know, uh, most of the food that we eat is not really like resilient. I mean, some of it is, don't get me wrong. Like some of the berries and stuff like, oh my gosh, like blackberries, like mm -hmm. you can't even control them here. Like they'll just go everywhere. But you know, some oh, yeah. of our other like sensitive fruit trees, you know, like, yeah, they take some TLC a little bit. Um, but I yeah, to yes. totally. You can you can regreen the desert. Is Peru is Peru your homeland, Joanne? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I just bought some land there in the in the north. That's so not nice. very not very big. It's right next to my mom's land. So I'm gonna build a little hut so I can have a space to go whenever I don't want to be here. I'll just go there. That is so exciting! Congratulations. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess this perfect segue. It's so, so natural with you guys. Um, soil, I think, is really for me, like, when I think about a domain, the first thing I think about, besides all of the feeling and the imagery and literally creating it first, um, when I get on my domain, one of the first things I'm going to look at is soil, because I want to plant a variety of different things, you know, like we talked about 300 different perennial things. And I think the soil is something that is so neglected, yet it is something that is extremely vital. And Anastasia talks about this a little bit. I like this quote in book two that I found. I threw an extra, this is so, I don't know, do you guys remember the chapter of the cherry tree in book two? God, an awesome chapter. Um, really solidifies the power of fruit and like how these trees like literally take in the best things in the universe to give to man. Um, totally like, uh, Elizabeth, as you were saying, like, should we eat these? Should we not eat these? Like, aren't we harming the plant? Like, no, this totally like blows it out of the water for my brain. Um, book one two. One of my favorite stories. Huh? One of my favorite stories. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Right. So for anybody who hasn't, you know, read or forgot, like Vladimir, like has this neglected cherry tree that he planted at his, one of his country house, I believe. And he never really like he picked it up. And when he got it, he was super excited. He went to the store and he was all excited to get it. 
and he was so excited and he got home and he planted it and then he like you know was away like he never was there like you know and that tree really wanted you know like this interaction with vladimir and the tree tried so hard it like um i forgot i think it was struggling and vladimir noticed that and one time Vladimir came, came up and gave it a kiss. And like Anastasia talks about how like the tree like lit up when he gave the, the little cherry tree a kiss and that um, Vladimir noticed it was whatever. And that's where this quote comes in, you know, oops, shoot. Um, you know, he noticed it was whatever, uh, not doing so hot. And so he sprinkled some topsoil and peat moss and fertilizer. And she goes, I'm, I'm in trying to help it. You actually burnt the roots by adding fertilizer, which is, I just love that. I, I don't use any fertilizer. Um, long story short, the cherry tree produces three cherries that year and Vladimir doesn't get around to eating them. And Anastasia says like, if you would have ate those cherries, like if you had any idea idea of how much was concentrated in that fruit for you at that moment you know like you would have just been like taking in that fruit like it was the best thing um I absolutely gosh it makes me smile I love that story ah, I love that story so much um so I have a story that I would love to share that's please. kind of similar to that yes please <laughs> So um, a few years ago, probably about four years ago, it was 2019, um, I was living in Florida and I was gifted a pineapple top um, and I rooted it and then I planted it and I, I took care of it for about like four months. And then, so this, this house is actually at a friend's house where I can go back and I can stay during the summers. Um, so occasionally I will get back there, but throughout this four months, like and while I was planting this, I had, I developed such a relationship with this pineapple um, and that I, I saw the image of it being my children and being like representing like the sons that I'm going to have and, and specifically like twin boys <laughs> that I was going to have. And I just like, I really embodied everything about this, this pineapple and I just cherish it so much. Well, um, I had to end up leaving for about two years and I had my friend who actually lives there like check on it but I wasn't able to get back due to like travel restrictions and things in the last couple of years. And, but this past summer, this August, actually, I was able to get back to my friend's house. And um, before I arrived, um, I, I talked to my friend and she hadn't been there for a few months, but she had a friend that was going over there to water her flowers. And she was like, she said, her name is Jane. And so her friend said, Jane, do you know that you have a pineapple growing? <laughs> like an actual pineapple growing on you know in your in your garden she's like no I have no idea so she trans she relayed the message to me and when I got there I saw this pineapple that I had started like two years prior and had this beautiful relationship with and during this month it, it only produced one pineapple but during this month it was actually like totally ripe and ready for me and so just like how this all came together for this pineapple to the, the first the first fruit from this pineapple bush <laughs> whatever it is <laughs> Um, produced it during the month that I was actually, one month in the last like two and a half years that I was actually going to be able to get back there. And I was actually able to eat from this pineapple. And it was the most delicious pineapple I've ever tasted. I, I let it get super orange. And I just like, I talked to it as I, as it ripened and it just like, it was such a special connection. And so actually the picture that's on my community page profile of a, of a sliced open pineapple that's the pineapple that I had this connection with. And so I just like, it was like it waited for me. And it's just, it was, it was divine. <laughs> so good. Oh my gosh. That is so amazing. Seriously. I am just like in shock. Like I like totally, wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for hearing my story. <laughs> oh my gosh. That like makes me want to, wow. I don't even know. Wow. It's so incredible because that you know none of that energy was wasted. You know those subtle feelings weren't like all that is you know, all that was real. You know, like especially about your twin boys. Like I felt that part. Like when you said that, I was like, someone's here now. <laughs> like something came in. Oh my gosh, so oh, real. Thank man. you. <laughs> yeah, I mean that stuff is so real. Like when we feel that that those things. I mean, just yesterday I was um. I like turned on some music and I was dancing by myself and like all of a sudden I just like 
I like I, I hadn't done it in so long. And I like called in like, you know, my ancestors and like immediately, like I felt the presence of like these children. And I was like, almost had like, just like tears rolling down my eyes. Cause it was like, you know, they're not here in our world. They'd be like, well, nobody's here. What are you talking about? But it's like, they're there. Like they feel you, they're waiting to be brought in. Like they're waiting. And that's what's so epic is like with that story, like that you're sharing, like, I mean, I feel that, like, I feel that, like it, oh, that creative surge, man. Like, ah, uh, so are you going to live somewhere where you yeah, can go find out? Go somewhere. It's creative. It, it doesn't just disappear. Like it yeah. has to go somewhere and it has to find its place and it wants to give back and it wants to share its love with you. And, and actually I think the cherry tree story, that's how, that's how Anastasia says that Vladimir came to her is because the cherry tree sent Anastasia all of the love that the cherry had and wanted um I guess like that's why she kissed him I think that's why is that you guys yeah. recall that well, I think like, I think the, the first kiss was giving back to the cherry tree yeah I thought it was because like um she wanted to help the tree and she that's why she originally went on his ship and then she had other feelings come over her then but originally, like that was why she she sought Vladimir out, which is so interesting to think about, like, you know, in her experience, like she's this all, you know, like intelligent, um, fully embodied man. And yet she herself, like had no intention of like, you know, being with Vladimir until after she saw him, you know, and like, that's what's so interesting, too, is like, you know, these plants know, like, they're connected with the planets. We had that discussion the other month or so planets and plants plants and planets um and those those planets are totally like working out all of that they're like these big magnetic spheres that are just pulling everybody into the right current at the right time bringing the people in your life when you need them the most um gosh it's so beautiful so amazing um okay last thing on this slide before some fun quotes leaves are the best because throughout their cycle all the planetary bodies see i didn't even mean to do that planetary bodies um which makes total sense i have a big gigantic pile of leaves um breaking down and i'm so excited to use them as compost because it makes so much sense um like don't fall into the prey when you're like shopping and trying to garden for yourself of like i need this expensive kelp meal from sweden that you know costs this much money to import over from you know another like you don't need any of that like everything that you need to make your soil fertile you already got it's on your land in the case of joani if she's regreening a desert sure like you might need to create uh, an earthwork you know like a structure in the earth maybe a certain berm or a swale or some sort of a holding pond that naturally collects water and then you might need to seed a couple of different varieties of some fast growing native drought tolerant plant that adds biomass and then you know you might like there might be steps there to create that but like we we all pretty much have the means to if our soil is a wasteland uh, a depleted wasteland we we have the tools to do that i think that's a, another amazing sigh of relief for most people is like you know what about these marginal lands i mean like the russians are living on marginal lands which means like agricultural wastelands lands depleted by nitrogenous fertilizers by constant tillage by you know like literally raping of the soil and then these people are going and creating splendid domains that are thriving you know but like if you look at some of the pictures on the anastasia.ru website like they're not cutting their grass like they're leaving their grass go and then they cut it and leave it leave the mulch lay and they keep doing that so it's like we're, we just have to be like a little bit like um biomimicry we just got to get into that like you know mindset of like not taking away and just adding that's that like that's my go-to like um whenever talking like we're we're building a community garden up here like I put in garden for people, like, I'm always like, no, we're just adding. We're not, we don't need it. We don't need to excavate to make, no, we're going to add. We're just, that's all we do, you know, because that's, that's how a forest is made. Um, natural succession works like that. If you have a bare plot of land. There's a, there's a phenomenal picture. You look online, just look, type in, you know, succession. Um, and it, you know, how that happens from prairie to forest is amazing. And it all works upon the principle of biomass. So, you know, the first um, weeds that come up, you know, these guys that are really the pioneer species, um, they grow fast, they spread their seed, they die, 
you know, and then you get some other bushes, you know, honeysuckles and blackberries and maybe some junipers and cedar trees like June, like we have here, not like Siberian cedars. Um, and then those, you know, drop stuff and decompose. And then finally get your big oaks and your old growths, you know, and that might take 40 years, but um, we can do that on our domain. Um, we can start a forest. So do you recommend when, when I garden, do you recommend me just picking up all of the weeds and just throwing them at the bottom of my garden bed? I want to go back to... And then putting the soil on top of that. Where is this? That's what I think I'm going to do. Yeah. It's um, almost like Google, but not really not trunks of wood yeah yeah i mean it's kind of like very much like that i don't like i literally will pull i pull the weeds just enough and so that they're they're gonna die or die quote unquote because they're not really dying their energy is just getting recycled into the system and i lay them flat like so if i have like a tomato plant like this and i have like a bunch of weeds growing up around like i'm not gonna pull the weed and then take it out it's extra work. Why would I do that? I'm going to half pull the weed and then I'm going to lay it and let it go around and create a barrier around my tomato plant. So it's a mulch then. It's a kind of like a, you know, it's going to keep water in. Um, and then, yeah, it's going back into the soil. And why do more work? Why spend time weeding and taking it and putting it in a compost pile? Compost in situ, in place, you know? In the same place, yeah. Yeah, it's like less work, you know? Gardening's easy. It's not like this huge thing. I was trying to find the quote where she said, and maybe it's on here and I'm just too excited to focus my eyes on this right now. Yeah, they don't die here. The weeds, don't, they don't die. Like, I don't know where you're at. Oh, like, they just yeah. keep on growing. If you throw them on top of the grass, they just keep on thriving because they have <laughs> multiple um, roots. So you like pull them and then they're like, oh, I'm going to crawl into this space. And then they just have multiple roots. And they're like these long right so yeah it's the last yeah. it's the last line here there's nothing without benefit in nature there are no unneeded weeds so i'm sure people like ellen know this and people have been gardening but weeds serve a vital function like every weed that's in your garden is mining it's mining for minerals that aren't present in your soil you know so like a really talented person who can id weeds and like can read a land can literally look at a piece of like marginal land and he can tell you what's deficient in that soil based on the presence of certain weeds. Um, I'm trying to remember a few right now. There's like one that's like iron, like milk thistle or something like that. Like it'll like they only thrive in deficient conditions. So, you know, if you're if you have a bunch of some species coming up, like maybe just go and like take the weed and let it go in your soil because like it's getting that nutrient that your soil needs. And it's like, that's how intelligent mm -hmm. nature is. That's what's so beautiful. It's like, you don't need to be going out there with a soil sample and what's my pH at? What's my, what's my zinc level at? Like, yeah, yeah. you don't need to do any of that, you know, let mm -hmm. nature do it. All right, enough of that. Can I clarify something? Yes. Um, you said just go out there and take the weed and put it into your, and put it, what did you mean by that? So just like, are you talking about not picking weeds at all? Chop and drop. Yeah, basically like, chop, yeah, like basically like chop and drop, but like, you know, um, I mean, you can, I guess it, when I pull weeds, a lot of soil comes up. So I try to just kind of like, I try to like pull them. So I know the roots are, you know, broken or dislodged and in my climate, not like Joanni's, they're not going to continue to grow. They'll, you know, die quote unquote. And then I just like fold them in around my plant. So if I, like I said, if I have a tomato or cauliflower or whatever plant, you know, and then I have a bunch of, you know, a dandelion and I like, I keep dandelions, I eat them. Um, but if I have, you know, maybe a, a thistle or a bunch of, um, here we have a lot of henbit. I don't know if anybody knows that's like, it's really invasive or whatever, but, but it's medicinal. Um, I will pull that and then I'll just like, let it lay, you know? So does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the philosophy, if you guys haven't looked up Masanobu Fukuoka, um, if Stefan's still on this call, he totally knows what that who that guy is. He sent the quote. Yeah, I love that. I love that book. Yeah. Oh, man. The guy has amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Really good book. Totally. Yeah. The insights are so like spot on with, um, I, I feel like this uh, holistic approach of do nothing, do nothing farming mm -hmm. is um, what he talks about. But what is the name of the book? uh let me drop it in the but i read it i remember it's um intro to natural farming the way of natural farming the way of natural farming and then there's one straw revolution uh, the i have one straw revolution is the one i read 
Yeah, I like the way of natural farming. That that has a lot of interesting diagrams that correlate the universe to, to gardening. It's very interesting. I'll look into that one. Yeah, it's a green cover. Um, okay. Yeah, so I just have a couple more quotes that I felt were, were pretty interesting, and then I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, you know, obviously, like, I think we all kind of know this, like, because it, it's just rational. We're not just going to throw technology out, right? Like, you know, we got to use it like, um, uh, does she talk about here, like plowing, basically? Yeah, 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 yeah. She talks about here, you know, like when you're planting your living fence, like use a tractor if you need to, like create a furrow, you know, and then put your trees in there and then take the plow on the other side, on the inside side and run it and, and refill it with dirt. You know, it's, you don't, we don't have to be like, oh my gosh. I can't use anything mechanical or electronically powered once I'm on my domain. I mean, I have had those thoughts. I've been like, hey, once I get there, nope, off grid. And it's not practical. It's not realistic. It's not, it's not going to happen. Um, we, can, we can set up a life so that our grandchildren and our children can live that way. But um, for us, you know, we might as well use the technology. I, I think is what I get when I read this is, you know, we don't need to, you know, any invention of the dark forces can be put to the service of the light. You know, a lot of this reminds me of the priests and what you shared before you started reading this quote, Wyatt, that, you know, it's the sciences that started to separate uh, and, and, fragment our our consciousness and our ability to think in a more holistic sense because you know biology chemistry physics it's all just looking at a different scale different scale different scale and you can get too myopic right you can get too narrow in that perspective and uh what brings that up is your comment i think it's absolutely brilliant about not needing to be so concerned about what's my ph level or my zinc level it's zooming out and seeing that everything is is working and has a a synergy so it's uh i'm loving these reminders to take a step back and uh <laughs> less is more you know and also recognizing that there is uh, some technology that has its place there but um yeah done mindfully and respectfully yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, it brought me back to, yeah, like what you're saying. And um, I think she's talking about this in book, book four it is, where she's talking about how, um, yeah, the priest originally like segregated knowledge and their chief aim was to distract and to slow the thinking, to, to slow the thinking of other people by creating these sciences um, that distracted them from the real science, which was the science of imagery. Um, you know, and, and I think it's like, uh, what's, what I'm so interesting, what, what I'm interested about and what's so inspiring about like Arion's calls is like right now, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of creative visualization and we're receiving some information. That's, that's, what, that's a given, but you know, like, are we, and maybe some of us are, I'm not discrediting any experience, but are we, are we able to visualize on a location and like immediately find out like all of this information about someone? Um, I'm not, I have, I can be completely transparent. You know, I like, I, I'm not able to, with my imagery, able to do that at this moment. And what's inspiring for me is like, as we live on these domains, as we garden in this way, as we eat in this way, like our imagery is going to speed up to the point of being able to gather real tangible information that can serve us. Not that the imagery now doesn't, it totally does. But you know, like how Anastasia is able to literally analyze situations like way far away from her like she's able to see people and like know deeply about their life like that is what is so fascinating to me is like as we grow our our rate of thinking as we accelerate it we're really going to be able to tap into that strong superpower <laughs> the power of man oh I guess that was an exclamation point to what you said. <laughs> oh. 
fire alarm. <clears throat> I have a question for the group since he was just bringing that up. And in my line of work, I'm around technology so much. And so I have to be really mindful of the balance of the more I use it, the more I need to um, get away from it, be outside, be in sunlight, things like that. But, um, and then getting on to the point of, you know, having your senses heightened when really you take the space of thought. And my question for the group was, what I found noticing during this, you know, pandemic time where everyone was forced into being slower, being quieter, being at home, being at family, less rushing. I, I mean, between me and my children, we had these experiences of connecting to things that were unexplainable, especially my, my littlest daughter, because we had the time to slow down and be quiet. I didn't know if anybody experienced anything like that, but it was just terrifying to me at first as a mother, <laughs> but also fascinating because I'd read these books and thankfully having an awareness that it's possibility. Did anybody else experience something like that during this last two years? I'll speak to that. I've been in retreat for a number of years and I came out in September and being in the lockdown in North Carolina in this area, I thought it was just a continuation of the retreat because I can still take hikes, hikes and connect, plug in. I don't do well in houses most of the time, but I can really do wonderfully outside. And the number of people that I cross paths with out there hiking all had the same experience, or not all, but a number of conversations came up. And the same thing was, we were all just elated. It, you know, it was just simpler. It's, we got something we weren't even planning for. Turn off the news and go outside, folks. It's great. Absolutely. When, uh, when the uh, quarantine had begun, um, I took time, just like you were saying, Megan, just like um, this gentleman was saying, I didn't catch his name, but um, you know, we had to slow down. And what I realized really quickly was the degree to how I was so inflamed. Like I was so stressed mentally, emotionally, physically. And I was probably that, you know, stressed like that for a really long time, <laughs> you know, and like your body adapts, right. You don't realize that you're just going and going and going and going. So for me, when the quarantine had first happened, it was, it was uh, coming to that realization of, wow, I'm actually exhausted. I'm, I'm so inflamed and exhausted here. And then taking that time to like get myself back to homeostasis and back to like a, a very um, real inner peace, inner calm. And it actually took me a while to get to that point. Uh, it was pretty shocking for me. Like I, I had no idea. I was um, in that state and then highlighting what um, the gentleman just said there, um, actually having the time to step outside and be, uh, you know, really connect with nature deeply. Um, unbelievable. Oh my God. I'm so grateful for, for that time because, you know, who's to say I wouldn't have gotten really sick, you know, when you're so inflamed and you're so stressed, that's when like serious sickness can come in. No wonder why our society is so, was so sick and is still sick now right we were just running like so mechanically yeah I definitely resonate with what you're saying absolutely yeah Megan that, I agree with that I would say mine experiences of slowing down and being really present and having these weird things happen in time happen years before the pandemic when I had had a, a very busy life and go, 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 a lot of different, you know, shifts in how I, m money came to me and what I focused on. And then I had a business with a partner, we sold it. And then I had time and money at the, at the, for the first time <laughs> at the same time. And so I had all this drop of stress and I found myself just sometimes sitting out in the little backyard and I watched ants for like two hours once. I watched a spider 
weave its web and, and notice things that I've never, ever noticed before. And I slowed so way down that I noticed each ant would stop and greet the ant coming from this direction, going that direction. I mean, it was like fabulous and fascinating what I learned just from observing things that I never had noticed before. I'd never been that slow to notice. And so, bye, Ariane. <laughs> and uh, in that feeling of, so now that I've been in a place in the pandemic where I can't get out the way I used to in nature, I can go back to all these memories I've had of, there's so many, it's like my, um, like my bank account is really my nature account of these memories of tuning in to the wisdom and wildlife or in the creek, what I learned from the flow of water, you know, how, how, it, how it flows around in different conditions. I learned so much just from observing nature that I can draw upon that now when I'm not able to get out as much. And so, so rich. You know, and there's so many beautiful experiences to come. Just being more connected and slower and not having the, um, the stress, as Ariane was saying. So thanks for listening. I love that. I resonate with that, you know, that bank account of your experience and nature. I, I, I feel that. Absolutely. And we all need it. And if we don't do it by choice, then nature is going to be like, all right, it's time to slow down. We need a, a refill. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for your patience. My fire alarm went off unexpectedly. So appreciate everybody carrying on. Um. Yeah, you I, typed in fire. <laughs> what I caught type in? Oh, firearm. <laughs> Everybody's like, whoa, he's got guns? Whoa. No, nope, my fire alarm. For some reason, the flu was, I mean, it's open all the way. I don't know. It's like, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah. I, I, that bank account of nature thing is really sticking with me at this moment. Like I'm remembering, I'm having flashbacks from sitting in my garden in the summertime and watching how like bees work, um, when they, when they hop on a flower and then how like, um, squash bugs, uh, not my favorite creatures in the world, but you know, they serve a purpose, but watching them on squash and you know, how they, how they all huddle together and then yeah, so interesting because, you know, like what science attempts to do is to segregate things and break it apart and then study it. And it's like Adam breaking off the branch of the tree. Like it's just totally swayed then. You can't understand it. You know, it's, you have to view it holistically or else you miss the, un you miss it. So yeah, beautiful shares, guys. Man, good call. Why well, I, I, I wanted to... No, go ahead. I wanted to um, build on that idea of what you were saying about weeds. And there's a weed in New Mexico called, called bindweed, and it's in the morning glory family. So it has this pretty little flower, but it grows yeah. everywhere in disturbed soil. Yeah. And its roots can go 80 feet deep. So it's, it's virtually impossible to weed because you can break it off, but it'll go under any, any kind of compost or mulch you put on it just spreads but this i wanted to bring up sometimes science can be used to support nature because this one researcher said but it's bringing nutrients like you said minerals from 80 feet below that the soil needs to replenish itself it knows what it's doing it's serving a purpose and when the soils rebalance with the proper microorganisms and moisture and so on it doesn't grow there anymore it's done its purpose and so i think that all of these things are really fascinating because sometimes science can make us really understand like the wonder of thing like emoto's work with freezing the water you know with the different 
you know, those things. And sometimes it can be used for the light, not just the darkness. So I, I just always try to ask my body, is this truth or not truth when I read something like, like you say, I don't need fertilizer. I don't need to, you know, take clear off the biomass to bring back in some packaged mulch that probably are compost that probably has some industrial waste product in it from sewage sludge and they put it in a bag and sell it and say it's organic, you know, like, like being aware of where the science has gone wrong and where it actually can kind of show us the miraculousness of nature and bring us back to awe and yeah. uh, respect and reverence. So totally, it can definitely be a confirmation mechanism. And it can also be a, I mean, that, that's, it's, it's, it's just another engine. It's just another thought image is how I look at it. Like science can um, accelerate doubt and it can accelerate confirmation um, and the energy of confidence and in, in what you believe in, you know, it's kind of just like, what angle is it pointed at? You know, what, what's the telescope of it? You know, it's like, it's this pinhole. It's like, oh, wow, that's cool. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> it's like, it's not really like, oh, okay, I'm going to have to sit here for a couple of lifetimes and then I'll be able to maybe give you an answer, you know? Um, doesn't look at the whole frame. It's like, I like the example of, um, um, you know, old cinema reels. And it's like, okay, pause and look at, look at one frame. And can you tell me what the whole movie's going to be about off the one frame? You know what I mean? It's like the movies contained thousands of, frames like you can't do it it's, so i think science can yeah science can say okay there's a there's a lady in the movie and she's wearing a red dress and um you know she's very beautiful and it can confirm those things for us um yeah it's interesting the scientists of the future i bet it's going to be our grandchildren they're going to be like they're just going to be uh, they're going to have all these new methods it's going to be so crazy you know think about how they'll be able to get information about other planets i mean uh so exciting. Hey, White, I have a quick question about something that's like process related. Um, is it, can I ask? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, one of the things that we do when we're having meetings where at, at the community that I'm at is that when we agree with something, we, tw we twinkle. <laughs> I like that. You know, so we don't have to say like, oh, I agree. We don't have to wait. And so it's like, I've been finding myself like wanting to do that, but then being like, oh, wait, wait, nobody knows what that means here. <laughs> um, and so I'm just like, mm, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like trying whatever. But I just am curious if people feel like that would be fun to do. And, you know, like, listen, and I can see how you twinkle, like, oh, yeah, you all love that. <laughs> after, after the community call on, well, at first, I, yeah. Um, after, the, <laughs> after the community call on Sunday, um, like, and you were talking about your experience, like, I didn't realize like your experience that like, you're living in a community right now. So like, I, like, if you feel comfortable, please shed as much light as you want on the topic of process and how we're doing things. And like, oh my gosh, like you're, you're in it, you know, like, I mean, please like that stuff is, that's what we need is like just different mechanisms or things to connect us, you know, and like confirm and <laughs> <There's> so <many. laughs> see like this is where I feel like because I'm because I don't feel interested right now in really like getting my hands into like a gardening thing. I just don't feel that inspiration. I do have a lot of inspiration around how to how to organize ourselves and how to talk to each other and how to like how to make decisions and just like that whole world I feel like I'm pretty I'm pretty involved in. Um, so yeah, thank you. I would, I would love to give some tips and things as I, as I continue on with the meetings. <laughs> yeah. You're a community facilitator. You are a community facilitator. Gosh, I like this now. I like you doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have anything else to share? I don't want to keep anybody. Um, you know, it's, we're about two hours now, so I appreciate you guys all being here and sticking around for this long. I mean, Jeez. Uh, Wyatt and myself had opened up a new group. It's called the Space of Vital Wellness. Is that right, Wyatt? The Space of Vital. <laughs> <laughs> we opened it. We don't even know. 
I'm oh, wait, pretty sure it's, I'm pretty I sure. think that's what it is. Hold on. I think I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I just want to be clear. Yeah. You just go yeah. confirm that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> confirm that for um, us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The space um, of vital wellness. I just checked our chat. Okay. Awesome. Great. Okay. So uh, we're, what we're doing is once a week, Sunday at uh, 12 p.m. PST, 2 p.m. CT, 3 p.m. EST. We are um, sending vital wellness imagery to two people in the community and for five minutes on each person. So a total of 10 minutes. Um, and uh, we're looking for, uh, I potentially have a nominee for this week, but if sure. any of you want to nominate yourself, do you want to nominate yourself, Wyatt? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I have a nominee. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> one day maybe but <laughs> no for sure for sure totally no. totally okay so you have you have a nominee okay perfect so let's um let's go with but, that and for everybody else oh go ahead. no i was gonna say how go should people, how should people post should they like put it in like on the feed like it's kind of like maybe elizabeth you have a suggestion for that like honestly you were the inspiration ari and i talked about like actually being like hey elizabeth like do you want to we have this group do you want to start it though but then it was like well that seemed a little weird to be like here's the group what we're going to call it start it you know but you were the inspiration behind that um from your like vulnerable post and so being the queen of vulnerability um can you enlighten us as to how like what would be the best way that you can envision people being able to like put out like hey like a request like what you know is it a private message to the group admin is it like a, you know what does that look like yeah, that is a tricky one. I think you could do multiple things. I think you could take like have have one of you be um, the receiver. So like, you know, or both, you know, I guess that, that doesn't complicate things too much. But it seems like some people will feel comfortable sharing on, on their wall, you know, and, and, and um, nominating themselves. Um, and some people may not feel comfortable like sharing their whole story or when it comes to somebody nominating somebody else. Um, I feel like just having the option for people to either privately nominate and then just share what you will, you know, and then some, and then having an option to like share your story. Uh, I think both of those things would, would cover the basis for, for people. Totally. Okay. How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds awesome. There is a post up there right now on the feed I posted today um, asking people if they do want to have that experience and if so, to PM me directly, but I will also put you to Wyatt to, to PM you or me directly. So to really keep it respectful, you know, as to who steps up. I mean, even though their image will be there, <laughs> you know, in their name, um, at least for the nomination aspect of it, uh, people don't have to know whether it's them nominating themselves or if they were nominated by someone else, you know, to really respect that privacy. So, um, so a message to all of you, um, please participate if you want, that's fine if you don't want to. And uh, if you do want to uh, nominate yourself or anyone, just reach out to uh, Wyatt or myself. Yeah, I feel like one thing to add to what Ariane's saying is like, it's not only for the nominees, like as you as the giver, like receive the healing as well. I mean, I totally felt that. Like, I mean, um, Elizabeth, like it was really interesting because like I started with you, then I went to Gabriel and then I ended with you both. And when I was visualizing you guys both, like, I, all you guys were doing was smiling and you guys were holding hands in this big circle and like this bliss that came over me, like that affected me and my physiology was huge, like huge. Like I was so uplifted that the whole rest of the day. So it's quite interesting that like, you know, as senders of it, we also like, we get that reflection, you know, like love reflects off the planets and it comes back. Um, yeah, so it was epic. And again, thank you, Elizabeth, for inspiring Ellen. Yes. I have a question about how Anastasia would handle healing, because I don't recall any specific example of that. She and actually, I mean, there's, a, there's a whole anecdotal story she gives, Vladimir, about a woman who she tried to heal. And, you know, she had to learn this lesson about how healing is not always the best. And Brian, a community member, um, really hit the nail on the head on our platform about this is that, you know, everybody is going through their own dialogue with God and with the universe. Um, and pain is only a dialogue with that, you know? And so it's, 
it's like one of these things where we aren't when we when we at least what Arian and I think like conceptualize is like we're not here to be like may that ankle sore go away you know it's like no like may may ease come to them may you know um consciousness may like bright feeling like I, I feel like we're not getting like Arian's saying we're not thinking about the how we're thinking about what yeah it's not outcome based yep. right yep. you're just holding an image of that person in vital wellness that's all seeing them shining and glowing in vital Sorry. yeah vital. yeah it's respecting uh, yeah. that that's yeah. it so you're not it, it's not outcome based in that sense you're not projecting healing it's just seeing them as whole and complete and vital yeah and permitting the permitting the space of love to do the work so we're just vehicles and where the space of love will do whatever work, however, in what quantity, in what way, that's completely up to space of love. So it really permit, it really respects what Wyatt was just alluding to there. It really respects what is truly needed for that individual. You know, that that's not for us to know and and that will happen however it needs to. So yeah. 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 And it, and it, yeah. yeah, that rings really. Um really resonates with me that approach as opposed to some other there are a lot of different healing modalities out there and and they all have merit but i i was wondering what your particular take was on this and it all sounds really perfect you know just the vital wellness whatever needs to happen and you're just using the science of imagery in that um that capacity of caring like really you're just sharing caring um through through time space, you know, yeah. it's like collapsing time space. And it's it's real. Happens. It's so real. I mean, I look at like what happened with Elizabeth. I don't know if like Ariane, if you notice that like Elizabeth and Gabriel, like after that, like there's there's a difference. Like you two connected first of all, um, Elizabeth. You have a new sense of space in this community. You know, like your name is ringing in the consciousness of us all because of that call. Like Gabriel, like from talking with him one on one, like is in this new space of like. I don't have to maybe do this and like really focusing on his mission and like respecting his vital wellness. Like it's, it, it's real, like what we're doing affects. So that's, what's so cool is it's like, it's not like, Oh, this is no, it's like, you know, Arian, Arian's the expert here on imagery, but it's, it's real, man. It's real. I had something too. Um, so I had a hard time like imagining like getting a visual or getting an image to go along with just the words like vital wellness. Um, and so, but Megan, this is kind of directed to you if you wanna share, you had shared with me really beautifully like the process that, that you went through um, and what you were thinking about with like, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> That was real. I'll tell you what she said in just a minute, but I want you to finish your story because it was really, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry. Uh, so, no, that, that was, that's great. <laughs> um, she, okay, so you had said that, um, but well, how you, how you, the, the imagery basically that you were thinking of was really inspiring to me because you were talking about just um, cells and light and warmth going through the cells and just, it was a, the, the imagery that you painted. I have, like, I have to feel like I have to go back and read exactly what you said, but if you can remember or say what you said, like maybe that could also be helpful. Um, you know, it was yeah. for me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. I feel like I've, I've done a lot of work with this in my life. And so I, uh, um, that the tuning fork, you know, analogy is really, really good, but recently, just, in, I, I don't know if this is the same thing I had said before. Really, I can't remember yesterday, a lot of the time right now, I'm so living right, right now. <laughs> but but what I'm, what's coming up is, um, someone said the other day, it's like, you're going here and you're in, you're, we're in two paths right next to each other and all humans are, and we influence each other and especially right now, and what we were creating is this space of a reminder to your body of what it's capable on its own. And that the key 
piece in order to change your cells or to connect with yourself, that's what it was. It was that you, your own inner light is so pure and good and has the, all of the knowledge of the universe, which is, and a, is it Anastasia or Anastasia? I always say the wrong thing, but she speaks about it in her books. So it's just reminding like we're a, we're a vessel for our, our true self, which is that light, which is that pure, good, perfect thing. And so it's tuning into the resonance of your inner perfect self. And then your vessel, your body, your cellular makeup is reminded, oh, I'm, I'm not what it, I need to tune myself to my inner, my own inner source and perfectness. And when you have people around you who are also tuned into that residence, uh, the same, the same tune, the tuning fork, it's easier to be reminded. But when you guys were talking about it earlier, there's the key factor is personal choice. So you can be there for somebody because I've had these um, instances of really wanting to heal somebody, especially like my bro my family, my brother, going through heartache of wanting to heal and oh, like taking ownership that I need to heal him, but he didn't want to. So that it's a that it's a choice still within yourself that you can be there and you provide the safe for, safe space for healing, but then the person from their own inside makes the choice and realizes that you're healing yourself. You had it there. You just needed a reminder. Is that, <laughs> I don't know if that was very clear, but um, that's sort of, sort of where I come from. And, and it's not from training or anything. I think it's just a reminder from, from experience sort of. Anyway. Yeah. Thank you. And that, that, is, that, is, that is really great. <laughs> um, because it's 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 like okay if I can tune into what it feels like for myself then I can tune into what that feeling of bright light might feel like in somebody else's body um yes so just sharing that light and then like and that's what feels so good and that's what heals us as we're thinking about it and that's what heals them in whatever way they need to be healed or gives them whatever they need to to move forward um so yeah thanks <laughs> And, and it's easier to do it for someone else. Like it's easier. It was so, I had a similar experience like Wyatt was saying on Sunday, I was laying out on the beach, the girls were in the ocean and I was just laying there and it was beautiful. I was listening and I was thinking about you and, and Gabriel and we had the same thing. We're all in a circle holding hands. And then it was you and Gabriel down in the middle laying next to each other, smiling. And we were all just like, you know, but it, but what I was also realizing is in that moment is it's so the gift of giving feels so good that it's easier to do it for somebody else sometimes than your own, own self. So I was appreciative to be a part of that space. And then, oh my gosh, you receive so much like, wow. Um, anyway. Ooh, that's so good. And actually you bring up a really <laughs> good point about, about it being easier to give to somebody else. Um, so yeah. this idea of nominations, I think that's actually really important. Um, it is something that's utilized here as in like when we're deciding um, for, like who we want to nominate to be to fill a certain volunteer role, typically you can self nominate, of course, um, but it's we like people to be able to nominate others as well. And that's because like if you are nominated, then you might not have thought about doing it yourself. You know, but like, but the act of being nominated actually is like, it helps the deep reflection process of like, wow, maybe this is a good fit for me, or maybe I do need this. And so to have other people be able to nominate others to receive this healing, I think is really important. And then of course, getting their consent, you know, to, <laughs> to, to be nominated, otherwise it's not going to do any good. Um, yeah, anyway, just that, that like that being open to being nominated is important. You know, want to that. Be that's a really good point. I love that. Do you guys want to hear something really weird? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I wanted to hear what I your daughter said. Yeah, I yeah. know it's the end of the call. It's about you, Stephen. <laughs> she woke up the other day. Ariane, you said, you know, the other day you made this comment, like you've been on my mind. And you guys have been too. I mean, everybody has. But um, that next morning, my daughter, my, my youngest had that weird dream. And then the next morning, this one. Kyla came up and she said, mommy, I had a dream about this. 
this um, man and woman and they became your friends and it was hard at first, but then it was really good. And we all lived in a beautiful place. And there, she described the plant and the train and everything. And she said, and I said, well, what did they look like? And she said, the man looked like Mr. B, which was her teacher last year <laughs> and has a um, mustache and a beard and longer hair. And then she said, no, the girl kind of looked like you. And then she just walked in and when she came back and I muted, she said, when I said, I, she said, that was the guy in my dream. <laughs> and I had, when you had said that and she told me the dream, I was like, thought about you guys. And then I didn't want to weird you out, but this is just what's been happening. Like these types of things. And she just came in and confirmed it. So. <laughs> Megan, you have yeah. been on my mind. You've been on my mind, Megan, like, repeatedly I would say like the last week and a half so let's open up doors and of yeah <laughs> <laughs> whatever that means you know I was just like yeah but that was just let's do what call me wow <laughs> she's like a little she's like a whispering oracle I mean all children are right all children yeah are well I'll tell you oh these these girls that was but what's been happening this past two years is things coming up like this where when you're too busy, you don't, you forget to listen. And then I finally started listening to my younger daughter and there was really, I mean, it was kind of scary, but also amazing at the same time, but that children are also a little bit reminder because they're, they're, they're younger and they're closer to that source and they haven't been indoctrinated or trained to think or, or think it's silly yet. Um, but the things that come through, it's, it's nice. It's a, a reminder of what is possible for yourself if you realize that just because they're children doesn't mean that they're like they can teach us right just as much as we can teach them so there's your yeah. weird experience for the day <laughs> wow Wow. So, Thank you for sharing. Yeah, are, are you guys going to go to Hawaii? Or are you going to BC? Or are we, do we need to set up a separate Zoom call for you? <laughs> you want to, yes, I do. Do you want like to go to BC? It was, yeah, she, said, <laughs> she, described, she described elephant ears, specifically the plant and the terrain. But so, you know, it might be here. Come over to any time. That's okay. <laughs> okay. We're fine with that. We're good with that. We like <laughs> islands. Yeah, yeah. I know, wow. I love it. Yeah. Wow, thank you for sharing it. that. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. It's definitely stay in touch about this. Yes, absolutely. Powerful. And yeah. to everybody else. So good to see everybody. Yeah, thank you guys That's all for awesome joining What was that, Ellen? I love the magic on these calls because there's always some like, you know, astounding story that comes <laughs> every time we get together. And, and now it's like, Oh yeah, just another like amazing coincidence, synchronicity. Of course, of course, that was the person that she had in her dream. You know, that's so yeah. I, it's almost like my heart is like, duh. Like I'm not even like, but my brain is still kind of like, wait, what? Like how did? And then Stefan was the one who was like, I want to hear what your daughter said, and like that's what's yeah. Your, it's your I know. <laughs> I'm like, you have like, to. This is, but we have to remember that this is actually normal to be yeah. tuned into this stuff is the normal. We just have to normalize magic. You know, it's normal. We've just, the, the priests made it feel weird, but it's not, it's like the actual normal, real reality to live in, which is mind blowing, but here we are. <laughs> what was that? I think there'd be a great business name. Normalize, normalize, normalize magic. magic. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. One thing I just want to highlight or celebrate too is uh, Cody. You uh, you reached out to me a little while ago when you first joined the group and uh, the community. And I made sure to read your bio. And I just want to recognize you for such a beautiful bio, you know, introducing mm -hmm. us to you and then introducing yourself to your future beloved. Um, I, I, I was just so, was so uh, moved by, by your bio. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I uh, definitely put some thought into that. It took some time to actually put my feelings into it. So. 
Cody, you you need to come over, take a little trip to the Midwest, and we need to hang out in the Ozarks. Yeah, so my my grandmother and like actually my mom's whole family is from like northern Arkansas, so the Ozarks area. So uh, I do plan to go over there within the next couple of months to visit. So we Listen, can definitely meet up. Kristen, Kristen's coming. Kristen's gonna be here in February, March. Um, yeah. I'm just saying settlement settlement members are lining up. You're, <laughs> you're lining up your settlement member is why at mm, they're lining themselves up and I'm like, oh, let's do this. They're all is lining up. <laughs> and you're their settlement members too. It's all lining up. <laughs> lining up. I want to figure out, listen, and maybe this isn't homework. I don't want this to feel like class, but can we figure out a way for like like we all have a brain, right? And we all like have like different pieces of the puzzle to where like, if we really think about our brain power, we could write these. Arian, I'm just mirroring what you're saying about there's these people that own thousands of acres, right? There's these people who are ready to give, be out of the goodness of their heart, like Bruce, like, and then there's people like us who are ready to take it consciously. And like, we have people who are accountants, people who are have master's degree, people who know community, people who are like, we have all these skills, like, isn't it feasible for us to come up with like the most like academic worthy like proposal for a settlement? Like, and can't we standardize that and make that a blueprint for like all of us, like in any area and then just like shift a couple of words, shift a couple of things? Um, yes. A hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like it's something we should like, we can slowly be working on. And then that way, nobody feels, I mean, Russians have that. They have that. Like there's like documents like, oh, when you're starting a settlement, like it seems like it's coming right around the corner and I'm starting to feel like, okay, well, what, what do I need to create? I don't know. Yeah. All right. I don't know, like we should have a brainstorming session about it. <laughs> what was Sorry, that? I didn't mean to. No. Yeah, like a, a white paper, you know, for funding <laughs> proposal. We could call it a green paper because we want ours to be eco. Yes. <laughs> More harmonious. But make it in a, I could certainly help with that um, writing and organizing it if we had a maybe a subcommittee of what should go in it and what it might look like. I could flush that out. And well, I think it's like we would, we would need to mirror current, you know, like, I don't know, proposals, but then also like we could totally infuse it with like real spirit, like real, like, you know, things that, you know, someone reads and they're like, whoa, the combination of their words just like totally changed my life. Like now, why do I, why all of a sudden do I feel like deeding these people 300 acres? Like, you know, um, it's a trust. It's a trust that you, it happens all the time when you're in the right place and you say the right words and with all the, I was thinking about this today and I'm talking to, I don't know if you remember Stace, uh, Stacy Cozy, who's in Idaho and she was putting on, anyway, I was going to call her tomorrow because she's working on this stuff too. Um, but uh, all of this training, like I always wonder how on earth did I get into accounting and tax? I'm a healer. That's my, who I am. Why did I do that? It's to bridge the gap right? So you put your spirit into these things to, that people, they know they want to feel good and they want, know they want to give back. And there's like here, I have people approaching me all the time because I'm an accountant. So they trust me in this world, but then they see something that they want that they can't figure out how to buy it, you know, which is spirit and feeling good and in tune and whatever else that little magic is, right? And so you put it into writing, you tap into all of our resources that work in the current system. Like, you know, that's okay. I have accounting and tax because I can create trust. People trust me with some of their scariest stuff and most secret things. Okay, now we can talk about other stuff and you bridge the gap. So you talk to them in regular, you know, current time terms in order to bring them over to look at this beautiful other thing that we can create after they're, I don't know if that if I'm making any sense. I feel like I'm going on a way oh, tangent, but no. but you're right. You're right. What you we can create it if we all come together. I'll do the and, money part. In in <laughs> we, 
Well, that's the most important part in the world today. I mean, like, I don't, we don't need to be yeah. around the bush with how like commerce and people think today. Like they think in those terms, we don't. And we know that we don't have to verify and validate that for each other, but most people do, you know, and like to have someone like you divinely inspired to come to this group, like, oh my gosh, I am like forever grateful. I had, I have no inkling of a desire to go into that world whatsoever. So, I'm so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> there's well, it's all, it's all, it's all connected. That's the thing. You, there's beauty in everything. It's just how you perceive it and how you perform it, I suppose. I don't know. But I would love to do the money part. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't want to keep that. <laughs> I don't I don't want to that we, we're at like two and hours and fifteen. Um, I don't want to keep anybody. Okay. Let's I, I'm totally open to brainstorming and really like, you know, I mean, even like I'm ready to pack my every day of the week with ringing cedars meetings. So, you know, Hey, let's just set them up. <laughs> it's like, why not? I feel good afterwards. Um, but okay. you know, one, one thing I feel like maybe is coming to me is like, can we, can we create an incentive? You know, what, and what would that look like? And I, I don't know, but just what would that look like for somebody who does have it? You know, is there some way? I don't know redemption of the soul is a big part <laughs> that's of it. what i was thinking like it's kind of like an immaterial <laughs> thing but i know it's heavy but it's it really it feels good yeah you know like that guy bruce it feels really good so he's doing can, it I, can you guys put into slightly i don't want to keep people too long but like slightly specific more specific terms about you're looking at what you're talking about right now is um, creating the terms for creating your own settlement. No, a, 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 no, a proposal document that would be a template for anybody wanting to request land from a profit, you know, large wealthy landowner or any organization, even it could be applied to city. Like you'd probably have to like really have some changes in there then if it was, you know, targeted towards a municipality or a county or even a state but like more targeted toward individuals and creating um, yeah, like a template for everybody though, that then they could just, you know, input their own information, but the, like the basis is there of like, you know, the right delivery of like, what is a kin's domain? Like the right delivery of how it's going to be ran, the, in, the assurance of like the feasibility of it, the assurance of the viability of it financially um, and economically and socially and sustainability and, you know, uh, all of those aspects. Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of what we're, at least that's what I'm brainstorming. I don't know if that's what you guys are. Yeah. Ellen. Yeah, yes. I'm super down to talk about that. Yeah. I, I think it'd be great to go into more depth about this. I actually have drafted a funding proposal for a community that has a lot of those steps already in it. And I, what I would love to suggest is Ariane lead us in a in a imaging exercise, just like you guys were explaining how the well-being, um, the vital wellness aspect works, where you you kind of uh, remove yourself from the outcome, but picture this, right? Like, so if we can do the same thing for the kin's domain settlements, like we're not trying to manipulate it in that way we're going to start from the broader picture and then maybe get inspired to how to create the languaging to support the images that come to us when we do that exercise does that make sense yeah Starting yes yeah we could see the landowner like we could see and like feel that interaction like we could see like i can i can visualize that mm. mm -hmm. like words like i think that nothing would make me happier than to donate this land for this purpose. To yeah. You guys. And like, like what his internal feelings are like, as he's looking at this document, we don't have to get lost in what's on the document, but just like, Oh, and he's like, then like the sense of life increase. And he's like looking at these people that are glowing and he's like all this, like, it's, Oh, it just feels good. That could be it. Arian, you have a full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, we're both working like 10 hours a day in front of the computer, everyone. And I feel like we have so much guidance. We have so much guidance that's coming through us to support us with this. And I see it in you too, Wyatt. Like, 
it's we really have a collective mind and heart and we're all supporting each other and helping one another uh, I feel it from all of you and it's like oh it's amazing and I pour it right back at each and every one of you it's this is an amazing time to be alive it's scary so freaking intense but it's also amazing we might be living we're going to be living with each other on settlements like think about that that's incredible <laughs> like that's that's amazing <laughs> that's amazing oh, apparently in Hawaii <laughs> Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh we can travel to all these beautiful settlements because we're one big sister brotherhood right in, in yes. the festivals think about the festivals we're gonna have guys like oh. the oh the good oh, yeah feeling. From like dancing and singing and then there's just like oh oh my gosh oh chills hmm. yeah yeah oh my gosh well all if right. we don't assign it to Ariane, maybe we can all do the imagery ourselves so she's not working 12 hours a day Ariane's <laughs> no it's, it works but it works it works yeah, though it works. It works. She's, she's teaching us guys she's 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 showing us what we need to do slowly so we don't have to burden her with the, uh, okay, everybody. Yeah, you think know, about it's just it. like with Anastasia saying, like, we don't, we want to get ourselves out of, oh, what would Anastasia do or say in this situation? Or what would the Vedras do or say in this situation? Because all they're doing is, what would a whole and complete embodied human, pristine, pristine sure. man do in this situation? Because that's where they're acting from. Yeah, it, it feeds you. It freaking feeds you. And it's a collective heart and mind. Yeah. And I like what you're saying, like coming back to your pristine whole self, you know, like, how am I showing up here? How am I, how am I called? You know, um, we have like little Anastas and Anastasias and Volodias in spirit all supporting <laughs> us, <here. laughs> you know, from afar. It's really exciting. Yeah, it's not work. It's not work. It's joy. Like it's, magic every day like megan was saying we have freaking magic every day because we're trusting and we're going so yeah yeah oh maybe we can ask megan's kids too if they have any imagery <laughs> that they would like to donate for our, our writing about the land and what it would feel like oh That's yes fun. please they would they talk about it all the time actually so and in fact, that's when, when you just said that I was called, like in my mind, she wants to show me her fort that she just built out on our property. Gotta <laughs> go. I have to go up. I'll yeah. ask her and then maybe it'll pop in the next call. Yeah. <laughs> Cody, you're, you're a musician, Cody? Oh. Ariana. Oh, he's not. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> you can tell anyone. We're, we're eager for <laughs> We're very eager over here for musicians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need I some wish. bards. We need some what kind of music? We're making we're making bard music. Guys, oh my gosh. I, okay, pardon me. I have got to send you this bard music. You guys have got to copy it. I have like had this song. Like I had a dream the day after I listened to this music that I was sitting on this ledge listening to this guy play music and I woke up with these beautiful feelings. Like we have got to listen to this music. These guys are on another level. I'm telling you. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was my thought train. Hold on. Here we go. I want to know what kind of music Cody makes. Cody doesn't make. He said he doesn't make music. <laughs> well, maybe you're going to. Maybe you're going to. <laughs> I would love Cody, to learn some music. Yeah, you're you have going to take to it on. I'm all in. in. Yeah, you oh, sound like that whatever. I love hand pans because you don't have to be a real yeah. musician like, to know. <laughs> Wait, I yeah. played the maracas as a band way back when. <laughs> Hold on, uh, Ariane, are we about to get a concert concert from Stefan? Yes, everybody, mute your mics. About to get a concert. That's exactly Stephane. why I got a hand pan. Yeah. From Russia, made in Russia. Yeah, these come from. Uh, actually, I actually, I actually oh, did have one of those, the the rap drums, but I sold it. Our musician there you go, Cody. This is life. Join this the band. <laughs> I never got too into it. It's it's a pretty cool band. I would join. How are you? 
I mean, seriously, tambourine, anything you could do background vocals. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Please try. I don't, I don't have much of a music sense either, although I would love to, and I, I would volunteer to do background vocals. So, okay, so here's yeah. how the here's how Kobe, our part. Kobe, our, you, yeah, this this too. is <laughs> this is gonna happen. Like seriously, when there's a baseline recording, I'm literally just gonna send it out to people and be like, "You got a you got an idea? You got an idea? Come on, this is the this is Anastasia Foundation music here. You know, this is us. So Cody can get in there on the triangle." You know, I'm telling you, Cody, we're holding images of you as a musician and you're rocking. Okay? You do <laughs> cowbells, <laughs> no guitar. Come on, you can, oh, leave. no, you, you could have do those, it. Those, those big tubular bells. Have you seen those in churches that are on stands? Oh. And those hollow <laughs> you can just be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. We're all gonna go look at your bio now, Cody. Yeah. I'm so eager to see your bio. <laughs> I need to add musician in there. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. You should. You should. Oh my God. All right. Well, I think um I think we're winding down here. Um <laughs> or else we're gonna we're gonna really we're gonna get everybody here playing an instrument. So. Yeah, we're gonna talk till Ariane's call tomorrow night. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Okay. So let's do what you said, Ellen. Let's uh, let's speak to some very affluent uh, people in the holographic field and see them gifting us literally thousands of acres, thousands and thousands of acres. It, it exists. It's out there. Okay. We're gonna dream it tonight. I or wait. something better, you know, or the or cash or you know however it shows up it could be could be a lot of different ways but i'm i'm into it just being joyful for everyone where it feels like it's it's like a rejoicing of us coming to our pristine origins again and then having the abundance flow as it it naturally does when we're in that power so yeah i'm so excited Love you guys. It's been super fun. Elizabeth, what are you we getting? Say? Are we like scheduling something to talk about this proposal? Yes. Yes, we oh, are. You want to schedule that now? Uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what's everybody's schedules look like? Bye. I didn't catch his name. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I don't know. I uh, his name is iPhone. <laughs> okay um i don't know what day works for you elizabeth geez you're the one suggesting it <laughs> maybe i'll maybe i'll um, uh, we can put a post out on the community platform and talk about and i'll put like you know um you know uh settlement proposal brainstorm or something of the other and we yeah, can like good. yeah but we should probably have a day other otherwise we're gonna get like 10 answers for a day and then half the people are going to say they're not going to be able to make it for whatever day that happens yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah uh just setting a day that seems to be the best i mean we could do friday <laughs> i might be or, or monday monday would work or we could do well i was gonna say we could do next wednesday oh yeah let's just do it next wednesday let's have that be the theme for next wednesday well, I'm not here next Wednesday, but we'll be here next Wednesday because it's bi-weekly. So Wednesday is free next week, but we can do it next Wednesday. Okay. Oh, well, let's fill that slot. I oh. kept my Wednesdays open. In my new job, I made sure that I had Wednesday, Thursdays, and Sundays open. That is so sweet. Thank <laughs> you for organizing your life around us. This is around so the... important to me. I've it is. 10 years since I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I know. Since I read the book. <laughs> so epic, yeah. guys. Oh my gosh, you guys are so blessed souls. Literally, like this call has been so amazing, so uplifting. Uh, oh my gosh, my fire alarm, my fire arm was a little bit distracting, but um, yeah. that you know, this has been, this, this has been, this has been so good. I have one more, th one more thing to, to say, super quick. I just looked at Cody's bio. Everyone, go and look at it. It is one of the most beautiful write-ups I have ever seen. No, I'm serious. You've got to see. You've got to see his 
I just read it, Cody, and it is pure. It is such a pure message. I can tell it's from your heart. And I'm going to honor you on the platform because you're, uh, you're really letting your whole self show from your heart. And that's really beautiful. And you're setting an example. So go check it out, everyone. I will. I'm definitely excited. Thank you so much. It was actually sitting down at, at, a, at a coffee shop earlier today to start writing mine. And I'm like, man, I don't have a good example of anybody's yet. I mean, Gabriel I said that he's when he did his, like it was amazing. He took like two hours to write it. This is um, so and so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna try, but now I have an example to go look at. So sing, <laughs> yes. guys. Yes. I've literally been thinking, I need to change my like I've just had this inkling, like, I'm gonna change my bio soon. I don't know why. And then I have been like, I don't know what to put on it though. So boom. This is it. Cody. Oh it's God. the most important. Cody the musician. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, this is are your precious words. His yeah. words evoke positive imagery and people are bright thoughts. So he's already a bard. Oh, yeah. totally. This is your life, Cody. This <laughs> is your life. This is your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> God. All right, guys. I appreciate you guys all being here. So much love and light. Love you all. Love you. Love you all. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night.